Yeah. New intro. How's everybody like it? Oh, yeah. Thanks to Gonzo. Gonzo, appreciate the uh, the new intro, man. That's awesome. Good yeah. job on that. Glad you Good like job. it. Yeah. So it's Thursday night reality check. It's fright night. Is fear holding you back? That's the topic tonight is fear. Fear porn. So we're going to talk a lot about fear tonight. There's a lot of different points I want to touch on tonight. We're going to talk about, uh, eventually we're going to talk about uh, the manosphere and how I think certain corners of the manosphere prey on men's fear. So that's what we're doing. So how are you guys doing tonight? Let's start with Primal Man. Doing, doing really well. I'm, I'm outside. It's uh, nice and muggy, nice and humid out here with the cicadas and the frogs. Um, adding a nice element, gonna have a cigar. Um, I may have to go cut the light on though, cause it's starting to get a little dark. Mm -hmm. It's good. Looks good here. Gonzo, how you doing tonight, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Good. Good. Let me, uh, let me see who's in the chat. Alexio. In fact, I pinned his comment. Petition to rename this channel the Tony Pill. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, we got uh, Oppo A5 Threes. Um, never seen you before. Well, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Joshua Elderman, Peg Bell. Awesome. Well, good to see everybody. We got a few people in the chat already. Yeah, tonight is about fear. Tonight's about what you're afraid of. Emmanuel Godson, good to see you, my brother from Ireland. I'm going to uh, eventually here shortly, I'll pin the... Uh, I'm going to pin the link to uh, join the panel. So anybody wants to come on and talk about this topic, you are welcome. But yeah, we're going to talk about fear and fear porn and what fear does to you, what you're afraid of. I want to start with Gonzo. Gonzo, anything yeah. you're afraid of? Anything that I'm afraid of. You know, that's a good question. Because I, uh, I think for sure... I can think back to times where I was afraid of a lot of stuff. Um, you know, afraid of dying, afraid of, uh, you know, losing everything I'd worked on, uh, afraid of, of uh, unfinished business, you know, leaving leaving things unfinished, um, and all that sort of stuff. And I, what, I've, what I've noticed over, I'd say, like, the, I guess now it's been about, like, a year, year or so, um, is that I'm not really, I'm not really like, I'm trying to think of like things, like if there's something that actually, um, would make me afraid. And I think now I'm just sort of ready to take it all in stride. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever happens, if something really bad were to happen, I'm just, I'm just ready for it. You know, I'm just, uh, I don't know how else to describe it, but, um, I think okay, I don't know. Like maybe maybe the only thing that that could get close to, to scaring me is uncertainty about the future. Mm -hmm. And those and in those moments, I have to like you know, that's when I uh, I take time to to be still. And so I'll um, I'll pray on those things, and then I'll you know I'll just I'll, if I find that if I'm present, then I then I'm not really. Um, I'm not, I'm not really in a state where I'm easy to, to, to be frightened. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. Now we were talking backstage about being concerned about something and mistaking that for fear. Let's go to primal man about that being concerned about something and mistaking it for fear. What do you think about that? First off, are the cicadas bothering you? No. No? No. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll, just, we'll mute if they get too crazy. No worries. Yeah, they should settle down in a minute. It's right at that point where they all yapping. Repeat the question. Is there, there a point where, where, I, where fear and concern? Yeah, because I think what, what can happen is people can – you can mistake your concern for something. For yeah. Fear. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, you know, I, I, I never look at, uh, I never look at it like fear. I always tend to look at it as an opportunity, a challenge, 
an opportunity. I guess that's the zoomer pill in me. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I look at I look at challenges and fear. I look at fear as a challenge. I think that's a nice way to do it. And that's just what I naturally do anyway. What do you guys think of this comment? Fear is a defense mechanism. Um, I, th I think fear leads people to screw up more often than not. And so if it's a defense mechanism, I think it's a faulty one. Like it's one that it's, it's one that shouldn't be there. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it's normal. I don't think it's normal. Um, unless you're talking about, well, I don't know. Like, cause obviously if you have like a lion chasing after you, right. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, you're going to have an adrenaline rush and there's, there's a very real threat that you're going to, you know, your, your, your life is at risk. So, you know, I, but that's a little bit different than the, than the fear that we deal with today. It's less of that, like the lion's going to eat you. And it's more just like, you know, the boss at work, the economy, you know, the jobs, the, um, you know, it could be like a relationship. So I don't know. I, I feel like even then it would be misplaced. It's kind of like you could argue if, if we're going to talk like evolutionary or something like that or like entirely secular you could say that it's, uh, you know, our response is outdated. Mm -hmm. So, has anybody ever had the type of fear where you're frozen? Because I think that's a response to fear, like somebody freezing in a tense situation. I had that one time. It was in a job interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, think of a. Let's think of a police officer or a soldier. And the first time they're in a firefight. And I'm sure there's times where people have frozen up where you just can't move. Uncle Gunn says, I don't believe in fear. Well, good for you. That's the spirit. I can think of a I can think of a time I'll say in the past I'll say 12 15 years that I was a little bit fearful and it was uh first of all it was my we'll say in the past 15 years or more it was my first martial arts match my first tournament I was fearful something it's a place I've never been before I've trained hard I was ready for it, but I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't quite sure what to expect, if that makes any sense. But I do remember um, basically being on the bottom and a guy on top of me. And I found myself not being able to breathe. And it wasn't that I couldn't breathe. It was almost, it was the fact that where his chest was on me, and it was called in guard. So I had him in guard with my legs wrapped around him, trying to hold him. But I was fearful that I couldn't breathe, even though I knew I could breathe. And I did panic. But that was early, early in my martial arts days. But that was a fearful moment. I remember that vividly and how frightening that was. So that was a fearful moment in, in, in my life. One of the few that I can remember. And after years of martial arts, my fear went away eventually. Um, in fact, I think that's what probably was the reason for some of my major injuries, because I had no fear. But the fear was I lost the fear because the amount of training that I did. So I think that's kind of relative. Your fear is relative on what you're trained for. But that's kind of a that's that that was definitely a fear that is in the back of my mind, probably forever, was not being able to breathe. So imagine, I mean, think think of that when you can't breathe. That 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 sends that sends fear through your body, you know. 
I can think of times surfing being held under, you know, surfing. And I remember one time in Puerto Rico surfing and being and being held down against the bottom and knowing I have to take a breath. Knowing if I take a breath underwater, it won't be good. And that's fear. That's fear. But there's been a few times where I've been held down where I actually felt the peace over me. And I said, this is it. Like, I'm going to drown. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's just no way. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to drown. You know, I've had that happen here during the hurricane swell where it just there was just nothing. I had no air left. There's just nothing left, you know, and then you pop up to the surface, grab, grab a quick breath. And then, you know, here comes another 10 foot wave about to dump on your head and you just got that breath and you go down to the bottom again, you know? So that's, that, that to me, that's, that's my version of fear. So, so like primal man, any other, or Gonzo, any other things like that? that actually? Yeah. Yeah, a, a good fear to, to mention is uh, claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. Claustrophobia. Yeah, I remember getting claustrophobic as a kid when uh, when I'd go through the uh, the playground tunnels, the tubes, the tunnels as a kid, and other kids would want to try to pass me, and they just like running through it like it ain't no big deal, and I'm just like, man, if this kid passes me, I ain't gonna be able to breathe, <laughs> you know, and. Uh, I remember going and sitting in like the little spot with the window and it was like my, my little area where I, I didn't feel, you know, you literally feel like you can't breathe mm -hmm. and I've been stuck, but you can, and you that's can, you can breathe, yeah. but the claustrophobia makes you feel like you can't. Um, so, you know, like if I was, if I was to, uh, climb through a, a, if I was to climb through a, a a small tube or something like they do in like, you know, uh, different training type, you know, different training um, things people do. I don't know. I'd have to see. I'd have to see about it. But I probably have flashbacks to those McDonald tubes. <laughs> I mean, I, I it's funny you say that because I, I remember like when I was younger where my older brother or even my younger brother would you'd be sleeping. And they pull the covers over you and just like hold you down. That's my dad. You my dad used to do that to us. He'd take the pillow and he'd take a pillow and he'd be like, you going to smother. you going to smother. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that, but it was a joke. We thought it was funny. But we'd be like, no, no. And we, I mean, he might would hold us under there for less than, you know, 10, five seconds, you know. Yeah. So, but we thought we were going to die. So we agree on, we agree on that the ability, actually the not ability to breathe causes fear, period. Would you guys say? Yeah. Yes. I mean, for sure. For sure. A deep human fear mm -hmm. that your life source will be swiftly taken from you. Mm -hmm. But also, also tell me if I'm wrong, right? But I, I, I feel like there's a distinction between like something like that where like your head is in a vice or like, you know, like there's like you have like a physical reaction. And then I feel like there's like a spiritual fear mm -hmm. where it's like it's 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 all in the I, I don't know, for lack of a better term, it's like it's all internal and none of it is external at all. And I feel like there is a difference, but I'm I'm having trouble sort of pinning down exactly how to describe that. Yeah, this is Mr. C made a good point here. It's important to distinguish real fear, re, real fear versus anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Actually, and 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 anxiety, all that stuff can be a, it could be a chemical issue in your body, mm -hmm. for sure. Joshua says, knowing danger and being crippled by fear are different. Bad decisions are made when you are in a state of fear, but you can learn to handle yourself when you're in danger. Yeah, and I think that be, that comes from practice. That that comes from that comes from, you know, doing something over and over again, 
and getting used to it. You know, it's kind of like a soldier or a policeman. I, you know, think, think, think about like, um, you know, none, of, you know, none of us have been in the service, but think about somebody who's been in a real, you know, firefight. I mean, think about that. You know, how would the average guy handle that? You know, I know, um, you know, like Primal Man, you carry a weapon, so do I. How would you react if you ever actually had to use it? God forbid, of course. Hesitantly. Yeah. I'd be hesitant to use it. I, yeah. It would be a last resort. Yeah. But sometimes it might be the only resort. Yeah. You know? Yeah, quickly, very quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a... That's something that training and kind of your mental state, you have to be really aware. You got to always be calm and always be ready to be calm in a, in a, in a intense, in a dangerous situation. You got to sort of mentally prepare yourself to always be calm before the intense situation gets there. Mm -hmm. Even though you're probably, your heart's going to race, you're probably going to lose your breath, these types of things. And sort of try to map out a plan, especially if there's a if there's a risk of danger. Always sort of map out a plan, and then prepare yourself to be calm if the situation arises. Mm -hmm. At least prepare, prepare yourself, your body, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Whereas the physical part is just going to sort of go, do what it's got to do on its own. Um, but it's always important to never overreact, and fear causes people to overreact. I'm going to say Uncle Guns was in the service because he says getting shot at isn't fun, um, you know, unless he's in Chicago or something. But I'm yeah. going to say that's that's a military statement, you know. And anybody that's out there that is was in the military, I'm going to tell you that you got three guys on this panel that appreciate your service more than more than we can tell you. Um, so much respect for our military and our police. That's for sure. You know what's and, interesting. I think getting shot at Uncle Guns can can um, correct me, but I think getting shot at is is not something you quite realize the danger of until after the fact. You know, bu bullets are whizzing by, and then you know you're in the heat of the battle. But later, you're just like, oh man, I was I was millimeters from death. You don't quite realize it in the heat of the moment. Well, you guys think remember we had Jeremy Stafford on, remember? And he talked about. Talked about his firefight. Yes. And he said it sounded like bees going by his head. Yeah. Yeah. I like this comment a lot because this is a good one. Well, if anyone is familiar with shadow people, then yes. I was frozen in fear when I was awakened in the middle of the night by, by one. Felt extremely evil in the bedroom that night. As I, This has happened to me. Not recently, but I know in the past where I have woken up out of a sleep and was pretty much frozen. So, bring on Michael Foster. Yo, hey. Yo. There he is. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about fear tonight. Cool. You know, the reality of fear, I guess, is what it is, because it is reality check Thursday night. So the reality of fear and what are you fearful of? One thing I do want to get in, I'm going to open up the stream eventually, but I do want to talk about um, and I'm sure Michael Foster, Gonzo and Primal Man will have comments on this. And it's about the manosphere, how the manosphere will prey on the fear of men. I don't know. I don't know what you got to say about that, but we'll touch oh, base. Yeah. In, in a bit, because I think that's that's also part of a, I want to say a money-making scheme, but that, you know, keeping somebody in fear also will empty their pockets. But we'll touch base on that. But um, yeah, welcome, Michael Foster. And um, I want to ask you a question is, um, when somebody says fear or being afraid, what is that? What does that bring to your mind? Um. Well, fear has a lot of 
census. So in scripture, we talk about fearing God, <coughs> which is something like a uh, the reverence someone has for someone that's more powerful and more dangerous than you, but still loves you, right? So like it's normal for a child to fear their dad because he's powerful, almost like you fear a chainsaw or something, right? Like not not like the chainsaw is going to bite you, but it could. Um, so we should revere God. God's powerful. We should fear God. So there's that type of fear. And then um, I don't know. Um, my niece is it bad still, Gene? I'll work on it. It's just very sharp. Yeah, it just sounds like you're in a tin can. That's all. Give me a moment. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's look at some of these comments here real quick. But yeah, we're talking about like that fear in the night. I've I've felt that before. I'm just gonna go off the old yeah. MacBook mic. How's that? Is that better? Sounds, yeah, sounds good. <sighs> Yeah. Okay. Cheap Xbox headphones. Um, so um, what I was going to say with fear is that I think there's different types of fear. I think there's a fear that's what we I would call a slavish fear. That's where you're just like desperately uh, scared that someone's going to like kill you, hurt you, you're going to lose out. And you see a lot of that in the manosphere. It's a sort of catastrophizing. So catastrophizing is where like, um, man, if I fail this test, I'm going to fail this class. And if I fail this class, I'm going to fail college. And if I fail college, I'm going to be a failure, right? So it's a sort of fear that just rolls. It's like a snowball coming down a mountainside. And you see that a lot in the manosphere where people um, will say, well, look, the divorce the divorce is 50%. If I get divorced, she's going to take my kids. And if she takes my kids, I'm going to be a failed life. And I'm going to be zeroed out. And I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to be dead. You know, like. <laughs> It's just like always like building and um, and they don't recognize that they're being driven by a sort of fear and they'll, they'll call it principles. But it's it strikes me more of fear. Right. Like they're just scared of the things they can't control. It's it's in my opinion, it's very feminine. Right. Um and that's not to say that there aren't risk uh, attached to marriage these days. I mean, there clearly are mm -hmm. risk. And I don't want to downplay that. I'm not trying to insult anyone that's been through a nasty divorce or anyone that's looking at it. But there is a lack of sort of rational evaluation that happens where everything's just this sort of catastrophizing, where it's like the worst. I mean, I don't know. How many times have you heard? women initiate 70% of the divorces. I mean, I feel like I've heard that a million times and I know it's true. And, um, and I'm, but it's kind of not relevant directly to a lot of individuals. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it's more like a way, like I'm scared, but I'm going to call it principles and I'm going to hide my fear behind this sort of um, ideology. Or praxology, if you want to go that direction, right? Right. <clears throat> Donzo, you, you had thoughts on that. I could tell. I saw your gears turning. Yeah. Well, I think I think there's like a serious deficiency in, in people. You know, I, I like in this crowd with all this fear, right? Um, there's a lack of seeing the possibility for things to go right. Let's focus on everything going wrong and let's... Because you think about it, right? And it's like, well... I mean, it seems like there were a lot of issues in the world up until now. Some people think that there was a, you know, like times, ancient times were happier than they are now. But I, I don't believe that. I don't know which, how you would feel about that, Michael Foster. But uh, um, no, I think it's 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 been a rough. There's uh yeah. there's peaks and valleys throughout all of history. Yeah, this is not this is certainly not a peak. This is more of a valley, but it's not the first time humanities found themselves in valleys like this. Yeah. But I think if, I think if marriage as a whole was just something to, to stay away from forever, or if it was, it's just something that, you know, we shouldn't, shouldn't do at all. Um, I think it would have been apparent a lot longer of a time ago. So, uh, um, things, uh, yeah, like you said, like it's, you know, there's peaks and valleys. And so it's going to be a hard time. 
it's going to be a hard time for guys who, who, you know, want to have their families and get married and do everything and want to do it the right way and, you know, not make mistakes. Alexio has a great point. And it's, I'm glad he brought this up because this exact, exactly what he wrote here is in my notes. Fear of dying alone. And we'll definitely touch on that. That's a good one. Gonzo, did you get the headline about the 91 year old man, Texas uh, granddaughter? No. Who was turning? She was turning 29. He says, uh, "You know what they say? If you're not, if you, if you're alone and and haven't found your, the love of your life, by 29, you're gonna wound up dying alone." And that made headlines. I just thought that was kind of. Wow. Silly, but also relevant. That's interesting. Yeah, no, I didn't hear about that at all. I mean, let's let's touch on what John Boston said, because this is real relevant right now. It's what's going on is we're seeing, you know, we're seeing a new variant or is what they're calling it in the Rona. You know, they're pushing the Raptor variant. Yeah, the, the Rona sphere. Yeah, yeah, the Lambda. <laughs> Delta Omega Velociraptor variant that's going to kill us all. I mean, you know, I was telling the guys earlier in the stream backstage that, you know, where I've been working, um, a good guy, good guy that I'm doing work for, great family, actually real good family. Um, but um, he has been vaccinated and he's been sick and he, he did test positive for coronavirus and was I fearful no. of being in the house and being next to him? Absolutely not. It never even crossed my mind to stay away or wear a mask or anything. And I've spent the last basically week or so in that house, and, you know, just normal distance, nothing. I never had any fear of that. So what explains that, why I have no fear of that? Common sense. That's kind of what I think. <laughs> or just sense, I should say. I, you know, when we talk about this, I don't want to downplay the um, the fact that people have died from this, okay? I don't sure. want to downplay that by any way, shape, or form. I don't want to downplay the fact that somebody might know someone who died of this. The only questions that I have personally are things like what happened to the flu this past year? There was no flu anymore. So something is really strange. Something is really strange when it comes to this whole, this whole narrative. Yeah, man, it's, it's not real. <laughs> that's, that's the thing like COVID is real, but it's not what they're saying it is. Right. So if you have certain comorbidities or other issues, like I got COVID, I had the sniffles and then lost my sense of taste and smell for about five months. It's still not normal, but I had, I had the sniffles and a little bit of a tiny bit of a cough. That's it. You know what I mean? This is a fear that kids have lots of kids of, with single moms are very deeply scared of that. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think, I think you're just being very reasonable and uh, we have a lot of loved ones that we care deeply about that are freaking out. And, um, and so the, the Lambda or what is it? Delta variant. It's about the same as same risk as the, the original one. Right. You know, no, a few people die and they, they could have died of the flu or anything else. It's not. Yeah. People, people just forget that sometimes you just die. Um, and it could be yeah. just uh, it, from something totally unrelated. Right. But sometimes people just get sick from things and die. Um, like, yeah, ex especially if you're 400 pounds. Exactly. Exactly. Let's not forget about that. But like uh, I've told, they have story. they have they have trouble breathing regardless. That's true. That's true. Talk about claustrophobia. There's some issues. <laughs> um, but I mean, I've told this story before. But I ended up getting uh, right around February of last year. 
right before all this stuff, you know, really started to come out and, you know, here's a hit of nostalgia. Does everybody remember 14 days yeah. to flatten the curve? Yeah. That's fun. Anyway, but uh, yeah, right around February, I got, man, I just got like slammed with uh, tonsillitis, which I never had ever in my life, ever before. Uh, not as a child, never. And so here my tonsils were swollen up so big that they were about to uh, basically close up my whole throat. And it was that way for about two weeks. And I never had any, I thought I was going to die. And I'm just like sitting here like total misery, two weeks straight. I'm just like, Lord, is it my time? <laughs> because it sure feels like it. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously it worked out, but that's the thing. It's like, and, and, you know, I, you know, you can call it a, you can call it a conspiracy theory. You can call it whatever you want, but, uh, um, I, so I've heard a lot of people say that they got sick right around the same time. With January, the February, our, uh, our whole, so I work for a company that has, mm -hmm. we're based out in, um, the, the Northwest. We had people missing like a week of work with like the worst flu they've ever had their entire life. I mean, they, I mean, they were just being wrecked and, um, and I have heard that from so many people that late December through early February, they had their family went through the worst flu they've ever had. And that's 2020, correct? Right. Yep. That's right. That's right. For, yeah, that's right. Right before the pandemic. And I can remember, I, I, I mean, we were losing people for like seven. We're having people that are taking like seven to 10 days off work. Right. And pretty serious. And I know these guys, these are these these are tough guys. They're normal dudes, you know, like most, most guys like rather be at work than be sick. And, um, I think it's clearly, it's clear that, uh, Corona, um, was, uh, already in, a uh, in the States in late December, it was affecting people and it, and it had different effects on people. You know what I mean? Like, like me, I'm a autoimmune compromised. Um, I've got serious autoimmune problems and, uh, it didn't do crap to me other than like a couple days. And I, I mean, I still can't taste right, but in terms of all the, like the very dangerous symptoms, like having trouble breathing or whatever, I never experienced any of that. And it was, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't taste anything. I could smell like I put the crappiest smells in front of my nose to try to figure out like it was really wild. Like you could smell nothing. So I had like this coconut flavored shampoo in the shower and it's like really strong. <laughs> and I had, I had the coconut like shampoo up by my nose, like, like the air coming out of it. I'm like, I can't smell anything. And that's when I realized that I had, uh, I had COVID-19 and, um, but other people, man, I had some friends who were really healthy and got COVID and um, they were not well. We had one guy, who feels about it the same way I do. And he missed church for two weeks, right? He was not well. So it's like a very serious flu. It is not the bubonic plague. Yeah. Now this black circle, this is, this is exactly when I, I was working on a job and the homeowner was sick. She was in, she was laid up for about a week and we we're doing windows in the house and by Friday, me and my guy that works with me, we were both feeling horrible. I, I do call her patient zero. That's kind of my nickname for her. <laughs> but um, what I actually did was was take Zyrtec. And I've what never Zyrtec, taken what's Zyrtec, Zyrtec done? It's not it's allergy is. medication. I've never taken it. Uh, before. It's an antihistamine. Yeah. yeah. Within like five hours, both of us felt fine. Not fine, but it cleared up anything and everything. And that was the last time I can remember actually feeling like crap. I had but to hit vitamin D it hard. Around, it was around, I noticed the December, January, and January and February of 2020 is when a lot of people had different things going on. 
Yeah, I ran through our family. We we think um, so. I had COVID clearly, and Emily never seemed to get it. And the reason is, is we think she probably. So I had COVID at the end of last year. We think she had it at the beginning of the of the year, and that's why she didn't get it for me. She already had the antibodies. You know what I mean? And um, it just, it just. Uh, I don't know, man. It's a, it's it's the biggest sham I've ever seen in my entire life. It's weird because, like, like you're saying, Tony, there are certain people that this really did change their life forever in a very significant way. I don't want to downplay that, but um, the shutting down of the economy and all the loss of freedoms uh, is a complete sham, right? People that were at risk should have stayed at home, and we should have done our best to protect them, bring them groceries in a safe way or whatever. Like, I'm all for that. I'm not against that at all. But the shutting down, now we have severe, uh, you know, I work, I work with in the, the world of, uh, in the commercial industrial world. And um, our supply chain issues that we're suffering right now are no joke. They're massive. And our, our workforce issues that we're dealing with right now are historical. And uh, we, this is going to hurt people's lives in a way that's hard to discern. I mean, it, it really is. Um, we have created a dilemma bigger than COVID mm-hmm. with our lockdown measures. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're saying supplies, the supply chain and things like that. I mean, you know, I'm a contractor and windows and doors is a big part of my business. Windows and doors um, used to take about two to three weeks. Now they're taking anywhere from two to six months. Yeah, I hear January, a lot of them are delivering. Mm-hmm. So, so we're doing a lot of commodities with steel. We've watched PVC go up 300%. We've watched steel go up 300%. Um, the, the issue is that you had to shut down. So like a very simple way to explain this to people is just imagine that every month that people want 10, 10 silver, okay, or 10 lumber, and then three months go by and the factories don't work. Okay, so you've got pent up demand for 30 for 30. Okay, and then you start to bring your people back, but you're working at a lower capacity of 50 percent. So you're producing five every month. So it's going to take you six months from that point on to hit the pent up demand. Right. That this, That's just a very simple way to explain what's happened. I mean, so we've been trying to get people to freight our stuff. And um, freight is becoming a huge problem because there's not enough drivers. And what used to take me three to five days to deliver is taking me seven to ten days. And uh, and if I could get in the back of a truck, it's going to be three to five days. But I got to find a truck, got to find a driver. And I work in a multi-million dollar business, right? And it's and we're able to absorb it a little bit because of where we're at, but um, it's that this is this is a historical thing that's happening right now it's it's a it's a very serious thing and so it's one of the cases where the cures were worse than a disease quite literally i'm just waiting for the the uh truth to be revealed about its manipulation in a lab and the funding to wuhan I think they're on their heels with that, but that's the absolute truth. Yeah, um, Jay has a good point here because I've never had this issue before. I've, you know, I've heard of this happening. Yep. <laughs> Seriously, I've heard of this happening before to people's live streams when they're talking about stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Primal, how's it impacted the drug industry? I see you got your Cuban drug dealer hat on. Is it hurting your ability to sell drugs? <laughs> no. Have you sold any while you've been on the porch at, during this stream? <laughs> <laughs> all the operations are underground, fellas. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Yeah. So, so I think that the newest, the newest round of fears I see that they're pushing is again, is this variant. Okay. But w- what I also see is that, the, and I think it was me and me and Gene were talking about this privately is that the new narrative is that 
the only people that are getting sick now is people that are unvaccinated. And the, the unvaccinated people are now the enemy. Yeah. Which is factually incorrect because people are still getting sick, even though they, they're, you know, they're following the protocol. Well, like the girl at the Olympics, she already had the vaccine. She got, mm -hmm. she got COVID and she couldn't participate. I don't, I'm not even following the Olympics, but I heard this story, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, look, dude, it's not a vaccine. It's MRNA. It's, it's a, it's a experimental gene therapy. Like this is, this is crazy. I don't know if you guys know this. This is not, you can, I, uh, you know, I hate to sound like this. You can Google this, but, um, the, con the control group on the MR, uh, MRNA uh, gene therapy was lost. So they had a control group. So it's super important when you're doing studies to have a control group so you can know like, so you basically can compare and contrast the results you're seeing. Well, they, they told the control group, oh, this is, so, this is so dangerous. You can go ahead and get the, you can go ahead and get the COVID vaccine. Well, the moment you do that, the moment you do that, we don't know what's what. We can't, we don't have any comparison now. So the control group was lost. Uh, everyone's like, well, do you believe in science? Look, man, if you believe in science, scientific process, having a control group, um, it's all out the window, you know? And and this is, it's, it's kind of an interesting time because think of some of the characters we have come on to uh, Tony's stream here. <laughs> a lot of us have kind of different flavors we're coming from. And we're all like, I don't know, man. <laughs> This is pretty messed up and people are starting to see it. Um, it's, I think it's the most, it's hard to think of another scam that's been this in your face than the, the pandemic. It's, it's a huge scam and um, it's wild. It's changed. It's destroying our entire culture and it's almost, you couldn't have predicted it. I, well, I couldn't have anyhow. Yeah. Gaza, what do you think? What do you think? Did you get COVID at all? I mean, no, I, no, I haven't been tested. I wasn't tested. But, okay, I'll tell you what happened. When I the last time I got sick was was that tonsillitis, and um, I went in and <clears throat> I thought it was like bleeding a little bit. So I was like, "What the heck is going on here?" I come in, and it had stopped bleeding, and they uh, ran every test. They're like, "It's not strep." And they're like, we could run another test for the flu, but I don't think it'll be worth it. I think you should just take some Tylenol and just go home. And if something, you know, if it's if it starts up again, then go ahead and just, uh, you know, go to the ER, frankly. That's what they said. And uh, so I was like, okay, well, whatever. People die from tonsillitis if they're not, if they're not properly treated. And yet yeah. they're telling you to do that. And that shows you how drummed up everything with the with COVID is. Where well, people's like, just sleep a lot, drink lots of liquid, get vitamin D, mm -hmm. and ride this sucker out. You'll be fine. I mean, but, but let, let me let me ask you guys a question. How do you respond to somebody? And you have to think about the person that says this to you. You know, I had a parent I lost of this. I've had a relative i've had a friend how do you respond to that and i've had a friend that 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 died of this okay but i'm also going to bring up another point this is something that probably maybe you guys have heard about is that the ventilators the ventilators from what i read were actually killing people because what happens is they don't know what to do with this person so they put them on a ventilator okay you you following me they put them on a ventilator. And what does a ventilator do? It pumps in air. Okay. Into the lungs. And so what that what the ventilator has done is actually has actually taken over basically your breathing. And what it does is it blows up the lungs. Mm -hmm. So my wife's a RN, Tony, and um and Emily's not given to my proclivities to, uh, uh, you know, to the fringe. Mm -hmm. And um, what are you, darling, what are your thoughts on COVID-19? Um, I, I agree with all of you. 
I think that it's it was in our country. I mean, I remember you telling me about um, the flu that was going on over in China in December and how they were really concerned about it and how they, what the government over there was doing. And then um, I think in January, January or February, you and I had a whole conversation about you know, there's no way that this isn't coming into our own country because it's not like that they haven't locked down travel. And so it's it's here. And then you find out in hindsight that there was really illness over there in the fall. So it wasn't December. It was actually months. So like you have all that traffic of people coming over and bringing these things on airplanes and um you know, goods and services and whatnot. And I mean, for, for the kids and I, I clearly remember that we all got sick with the worst cold flu something in late January. Cause my grandmother was 94. She was celebrating her 94th birthday and we had made plans to go over there. And like the day before I ended up canceling because we were all sick. We had a, a cold or something and just, we couldn't kick it. And I didn't want to expose her to something, you know, she's 94. Well, we ended up being sick for like three, almost four weeks. It went on. And it just went on and on and on. Um, and then, you know, a couple weeks later, then we're on lockdown. So I just think they're just, they are just totally tricking us. And it, it's a, you know, on one hand, it's like, how is this even possible? Because there's so many countries involved. But now in hindsight, it's like, how can you not see it? It doesn't make sense that so many people were having, like you said, like just the worst, the worst cold or the worst flu or the tonsillitis I never have had before. All of us around like the end of the year, the beginning of the year. So isn't the timing is the timing coincidence with the election? It's just it, to me, it's like the timing was so perfect. If you remember, Tony, um, it was weird. So I started tracking COVID pretty hardcore with some friends over in China in um, February. In March, I was like, man, COVID's maybe really dangerous. Cause I remember thinking that I, you know, like the, uh, like, a a world destroying virus coming from China makes total sense. You know, I did, I did a video on, if you look back in my channel, I want to say it was <sighs> February of March of 2020. And I think the video is called coronavirus protect yourself. I said the same thing. And I, I, didn't, went, know, I didn't know what to think. I mean, realistically, I thought it was going to be flatbeds, driving down highway a1a in florida with stacks of bodies on it dude are y'all serious no i i seriously the things you that were coming out that were like coming out on uh chinese twitter had me thinking the same thing and on reddit a couple other spots that i follow and so i was like so i went and stocked up on food i stocked up on toilet paper and drugs and everything long before anyone else did but I thought it was less because you were you were unsure about how how much of a epidemic or pandemic it would be. But it was more of like, well, how is this going to affect our our food supply? I was I was concerned about supply chain and people freaking out. I mean, I, I mean, Gene, to 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 talk to your comment. Are you serious? This was the this is what they were projecting to us in the media at the time. Like, this is it. This is the end. It's over. And there was a narrative there coming up. We have an election coming up. There's a lot of things going on in the world at this time. And, and no one knew. How, you go to. See, you, go, sorry, Gene. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I just did. I just don't see how any nobody's seen this coming. Well, look, it, I, here's, I'll prove it to you politically. No one knew anything. You go to the beginning of um, April. And, and Republicans and Democrats can't figure out which side they're supposed to be on politically. You know, like if you look back to Trump back then, you know, Trump was pushing for the vaccine. Democrats are like, oh, it's a bunch of hype. He just hates Asians, right? 
And it went back and forth a bit until they kind of figured out their narrative. And they definitely repurposed the narrative to their their end. But in the very early days of COVID, late March, early April of 2020, it was kind of like a, a, it was up for grabs how to manage the narrative. I remember it because then I was like, man, I don't I don't understand. Like, I don't know who to believe because, you know, I. I trusted Trump more than I do the Democrats. But I was like, well, Trump's worried. And Do you know what drives me honestly crazy? It's the whole thing with the masks. The masks is what drives me bonkers. Because it's like everybody, you, you said earlier, I think it was Gonzo that said, um, remember the whole 14 days to flatten the curve? Okay, does anybody remember how this whole thing with the masks even started? Class, raise your hand. Does anybody yeah. remember? Oh, yeah. What happened? How did this start? What do you mean as far as the... Well, how did we all get to the point where civilians were all wearing masks? Does anybody remember? I it's don't. It's because those, um, those N95s mm -hmm. were scarce because mm -hmm. they weren't shipping anything in from China. So all these sweet citizens were at home making slipcover masks mm -hmm. put on the N95 so that way the healthcare workers could... <sighs> you know, like reuse these slip covers so that way they could extend the reusable or the, the disposable N95. And so people were making these in their homes, sewing them in their homes, you know, like <coughs> old fashioned, you know, what, like war, war, wartime kind of. Yeah, like World War II. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then somehow after donating these to different hospitals and medical facilities, somehow it got convoluted. Then it was like, you know what? Why don't we all start wearing homemade masks? <laughs> it's like, doesn't make a lick of sense because they kept going back and forth. Like, no, Fossey's like, no, it wouldn't be good for citizens. And then it's like, yes, it would be good for citizens. And then the medical workers still wear it below their nose. It's like not doing any good. Like the professionals don't even seem to know how to wear masks anymore. Why would a citizen know? It just drives me crazy. There was no consistent it medical wasn't. scientific logic applied the situation and that's how we know it was fear-based and and in a narrative they were trying to achieve right because it's it's just fabric like if i pull my shirt up over my face that's not the equivalent of an n95 yeah, it's of course just not. like tuberculosis supposedly you know that it's a, it's an airborne kind of virus that's spread and in a surgical mask isn't going to do anything for that I mean, I, I bought I bought all the N95 masks that I could buy immediately. I needed them for my work because I cut concrete. But I also gave a ton of them to my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. I gave a lot of them to local law enforcement because I didn't know what to expect. Right. My dad's a, my dad's a dentist and he did the same thing. He bought a bunch of them and passed them out. Now, I remember telling my brother to go ahead and order some. And the next day he tried to order some and they were not available from Harbor Freight. They were mm -hmm. all wrong. It was a wild time that's, back then. That's amazing to me. Well, I now we're just wearing whatever. We're wearing whatever because I'm, nothing matters. It's, it's gonna, all symbolic. I'm going to bring on Hold the Truth Hostage next. I want to welcome everybody who's on the stream. Um, <coughs> good to see you. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome Muhammad. I want to welcome Frank Pesci. How you doing, man? What's up, brother? Good. How are you guys doing? The primal man with the stogie, man. Doing all right. <laughs> doing all right. Monte Cristo. I got good prime. news on my side here. Right. I don't know if you can primal hear me, man. Tony. Am I coming through clear? You, you are, Frank. Uh, you are. Um, Primal so man. You might one have challenge to, uh, for me, and I'll just be really brief because it's kind of irrelevant, but one challenge for me has been my internet because I live almost basically off the grid, as a lot of you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have power. I have amenities, but I mean, I live in the wilderness, uh, but I just got an office space down in, in the local city here, so we're moving in. I was doing that tonight. As of next week, man, I'll have cable like the rest of you guys or fiber or whatever that good stuff is, so nice. uh, it'll be a little easier for me to participate. Um, but this discussion is timely, man. I, I was just talking about this a little while ago. I just got off the phone with a friend of mine from France. Um, she's telling me now that in France, 
You can gather. A mask is no longer sufficient. You cannot gather. You must be vaccinated. Cannot use the train, cannot travel, uh, cannot go to theaters, cannot go to any type of venue for entertainment, club, anything like that without the vaccine. And basically, uh, it's becoming a mandatory thing out there. And even some supermarkets are requiring vaccines for the people that enter. So uh, it's here. It's never going away. We're going to have to deal with it or, or resist. And I believe the mainstream media would have you believe that only 30 percent of the U.S. population is not vaccinated. But in my own surveys among people that I'm with on a regular basis, I can tell you and that's a diverse crowd, by the way. I can tell you that my surveys indicate to me about 60 percent of people are not vaccinated. So uh, at least again in my circle. So don't believe the hype. The media is out there to try to make you feel like you are in a small minority and they're going to use the people that are vaccinated. They're going to use that message that's out there uh, to attack those of us uh, who are refusing to either get vaccinated or comply with mask mandates or refuse to, uh, you know, carry on with life. Uh, they're, they're never going to let it happen. It's it's here it's more than money. It's it's demonic. It's deeper than that. It's about power. It's about control, consolidation. Uh, this is the, one of the reasons I moved to where I moved, because I knew that this was going to be what it was going to be. And uh, here we are. Uh, so I would implore everybody, you know, we could talk about it all we want, but I would say get prepared. Get prepared. Make sure that you have food. Make sure you have water, a means to defend yourself. Make sure that you have community and make sure that you have a plan, a plan and, and a line in the sand. Uh, these are the discussions that need to be had now because what's happening in France and in Canada and in Australia and these places, these are leading indicators of what they want to happen here. Uh, so we are living in quite interesting time. Yeah, Frank, thank you for that commentary. I love it. I mean, that's reality. Um, it seems to me that some people say we're buffering right now. I'm not seeing it on my end. I have I have YouTube live right over here. So I don't know if anybody else is experiencing that. I don't know. Yeah, my video has been lagging for about 30 minutes now. Just the video. Yeah, I've been having I, I, this happened before on my channel. Rob, what's up? Um, it's good on my end, guys. Yeah. yeah, I'm good here. I mean, I've been watching right. off to the side, so. Okay. But uh, yeah, let me welcome uh, Hope Truth Hostage, man. I'm sure you have some uh, input on this for sure. Welcome. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, what most people don't get, man, this is just a historical thing. This is a a sequel. You know, this is a sequel to the anthrax. A lot of people forget that anthrax forced everyone to get an email. Your grandma, your, your aunt, everyone had to get an email. And what this is doing is it's forcing everyone to order online. And, you know, as for the vaccination thing, I don't think it'll be as easily enforced in the U.S. because you know, right now I'm in Houston and, you know, each state has its own pattern of how they take things. And so far in Houston, uh, you know, it, I'm going to the supermarket, no mask. It's basically they know the amount of fear. They, they're trying to sell this vaccine as soon as possible before the hype dies down. I don't think we're heading the way of Canada because there's too much money in the U.S. Now, I'm telling you guys, Walmart or supermarket. They don't ask. They don't ask them. You know, I, I think it's it, it depends on the location. But I think what they're doing with this is the flu shots were not selling. and They need some money. They need you to go get the vaccine because because someone explained to me how this isn't literally a replication of the flu shot. Get it from your local Walmart, your pharmacy, <laughs> all the same steps. The only difference is unlike the flu which is old you know i call it, it's kind of like i'm gonna ask you guys this you go to the supermarket they have oatmeal that's natural then they have organic what's the difference between organic and natural so what's the difference between me getting this flu shot and now getting this covid shot it's it's the same practice they need a new sexy thing to sell on the shelves they know we wouldn't take the free sh the, the flu shot for free because, you know, we've seen too many people survive it. But now with COVID, they've amplified the fear. But it's too late, man. It won't work. 
It won't work because, you know, Tony, everyone here has seen the protests where they didn't talk about COVID when thousands of people got together to protest. Mm -hmm. But as soon as it died down, oh, my God, get your shot. I personally, I think there's too much money being lost. I think they're just trying to sell the last few remaining shots. And to me, I think give this about a year and a half, two years. It's dying down, man. It's too much money. I I just, I remembered, right? The, I think the moment during all this chaos, when I first started to think maybe this is all a bunch of nonsense, because we were talking earlier, I, I had the, uh, the same dilemma. I'm like, I don't know who to trust with this. Like, I don't know if it, like when it all just started, I wasn't sure how, how much of this was fear mongering. I had a sense that there was fear mongering going on, but I didn't realize how much of it. And as soon as that, as soon as they were saying the hospitals are overwhelmed and all the workers are overwhelmed at all, at all these hospitals everywhere, it's a huge issue across the country. I'm not very far from a hospital. I stepped out and I looked ghost town. Ghost town. And then I can confirm that with you. Exactly. Same thing here. And then I'm sure you guys did you guys see that that news um, that that news report where they're like, oh yeah, guys, everybody's oh. lining up to get their to get their vaccinations, and none of it was real. It was all set up by the station. I can't remember which station. Elmhurst it was. Hospital in Queens, man. Yeah. Elmhurst Hospital in Queens. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's on Crescent Avenue in Queens. I know exactly what you're talking about. Total fraud. Yeah. Uh, so this is kind of remember yo yo. Uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, Gonzo. Remember, remember Ebola. They did the same play with Ebola, where they they had this. Uh, they said the hospitals overrun, and they showcased there was nobody. There was just one person in the hospital. We have to understand, guys. CNN is in movies. Once your news network is in the films, me personally, I don't trust nothing until I've seen it, or I mean, literally, I was there, or. You know, somebody I know was there. I don't believe nothing. I mean, if CNN is in the films, you know, what, what is what is real now? What can you trust? With, uh, you know, these networks. We um, we were in the hospital for the birth of our our newest child in May of 2020, and this is a fact for you. So Emily had to labor with a mask on, which was stupid. And um, we were going to have a home birth, but due to all the, the complications, we thought, well, let's go to hospital. So we had the, the baby um, down in Good Samaritan, good hospital. Anyhow, they uh, made her take a COVID test. They stuck the whole thing up up, up in her brain. You know? And uh, I asked them, I said, so um, how many of these have come back positive? And they said, really none. And I said, how many have you done? And they said it was like 2,500, give or take. So they had done 2,500 tests just on pregnant women, okay? just These are women laboring at Good Samaritan, and zero had come back positive, right? So that's Cincinnati. It was the hospital. We went there. Um, it was it was pretty um, – it was not busy. And we, did, we went through all the different steps. It was pretty chill, and they had had 2,500 – women take the COVID tests, I guess. So that's May, probably, probably since April or March, I guess. And, and they had none come back, you know, and that's, that's, that's the nurses and doctors just telling us, I saw CNN. That's just us just asking, I'm like, I got to ask you like, cause they're shoving this thing up my wife's nose while she's trying to have a baby. I mean, mm-hmm. come on. The whole thing was ridiculous. Um, look, it's a sham. It's a sham. Like it's mm-hmm. super clear. Like to anyone that has eyes to see. Like yes, there is some small percentile of the population that's very vulnerable to this. I get that, and it's anyone that's lost someone that they care about. Like by all means, like I don't want to diminish that. But there's people that die from weird infections in the flu every year, and that is the category that COVID belongs in. Right, COVID doesn't belong into a pandemic category. COVID is like a really nasty flu, 
and um, and now they the these po politicians see an opportunity to come in and take away our freedoms because we're scared. And I think people, regardless, I mean, like, look at this panel here. I mean, this is a pretty diverse panel um, in terms of age and skin color and location. I mean, all over the place. It's hey, a man, uh, Rev, I don't mean to interrupt you, man. You you forgot to add in Primal Man's beard, man. It's, just, it's, <laughs> it's pretty diverse. epic, man. I mean, as drug dealers go, um, it's a good beard. Um, I respect it, right? Castro would be proud of his his son, um, but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, what the what? The, what no. <laughs> but but this is a time for Americans to realize like your basic freedoms are really they're up for grabs right now, and you got to push back, man. It's like it's this should be a uniting moment for people that love liberty and freedom. Well, I why, think uh, why are people pushing up. back? Well, you bring that up, man. I, I don't think people are just tired of the, like, remember 9-11, man. 9-11 happened, and, you know, we're supposed to all be Americans and all this, but then out of nowhere, it's just a moment to hold hands, and we go right back to corruption, uh, you know, different civil liberties. To me, what I think's going on is the American people are like, you know what, y'all you keep pushing it up, scaring people. We're going to do the most damage with our weapons. A lot of, I, I saw this coming. Once I saw the NFL having fans and all this stuff, and and then you see uh, what's going on with the NBA Finals, having fans again. If you look at the sports, you can tell how serious this thing is. If it was so serious, you know, I'm watching some wrestling here and there. People are sitting right near each other. It's a false flag, man. What they're doing is they're trying to hype you up with television, but how many people here still watch CNN or taking their word by, my God, I miss CNN. I, you know, I, who knows what's going on in the world? No, you just look up your phone, you go to YouTube, you go online. No one cares this horror, horror, horror movie they're selling, man. No one's, no one's buying it. And, and they could tell no one's buying it because people are going to concerts. The youth are still going where they're going. I think they're trying to scare people like Ebola, where they had one person in the hospital and they pretended that it's it's a rampage. People are running and scared for their lives when there was nobody. To me, they're trying to get people to adapt and get these shots. And, and, and what's funny about it is this. You just took a shot and they told you, you might have to take two. You might have to take one every year. And then guess what? The guy like me who didn't take a shot, I'm at the supermarket, no mask, just walking around like a normal person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think in Florida here, we our, our freedoms, I'm going to say in Florida has probably been the most open state, even over Texas and anybody else. Yeah. It really has. It hasn't... Um, I don't think our freedoms were taken away as much as the rest of the country. Back the airport, I, I was in Miami airport this morning or this afternoon. It was super chill compared to anywhere else I've been. Mm -hmm. I had, I was wearing my mask on my chin, <laughs> you know, like I was just symbolically wearing my mask somewhere so I could walk to the airport and get to my mm -hmm. gate. And, and no one, no one did anything. And on the plane, I didn't wear my mask really. And no one made a big deal about it. Where earlier this year, when I flew out to uh, uh, Washington, they were they were really on top of me, like you got to cover your nose, man. Got to cover your nose. I'm like, dude, we're sardines in a can. Like mm -hmm. we, we all got what we all got now. <laughs> okay, we flew together. We're all we got we caught the same stuff. But yeah, Miami um, was super chill. The hospitals were super chill, or the uh, hotel. I, I didn't. I just walked around without a mask the whole time. No one mm -hmm. did anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? We have Muhammad, and Muhammad is in, we'll call it a hot spot. He is in Australia, and Muhammad's a doctor. Yeah. So I think I think his input is going to be really valuable right now in this <laughs> in this topic. I'm I'm listening and I'm contemplating. <laughs> I, I could tell. I could tell that's why I'm close to you right now. A, a wise yeah. a wise man. 
Muhammad, what's your area of medicine? What's your area of uh, what's your area of expertise? Are you a GP? Or are you or are you more specialized? So, I was a surgeon before coming to Australia. We've got something in Australia what we call a rural generalist, which is there's a doctor who works in a small town, and that doctor is it. So, like I'm starting a stint uh, on Monday morning, which is a town of about six thousand people. And I'll be the only doctor there in the hospital emergency. That's so cool. it's emergency, family medicine, hospital, nursing home, everything rolled into one. So, yeah, that's what I do. So you have to do a lot of training and ICU and emergency and da da da. So, yeah, and then you do a fellowship, and that's pretty much what it is. How many bodies are you stacking up, man? I mean, all how where how, are you finding enough graves for all the COVID bodies? How do you guys find enough graves in uh, Australia for all the COVID bodies? Um, the mortality of COVID is higher than flu because most people who will get COVID will probably have a uneventful recovery, but the incidence of people dying from it is much higher than flu. If I get flu, I can die from it. The risk of that happening is much less. If I got COVID, the risk of me dying from it is much higher than with flu because that's just how this infection is. So uh, it doesn't mean everybody who gets, it's like the smokers, not everybody who smokes gets a cancer. But if, if there are 100 people who smoke, not all of them will get cancer. But if you look at 100 people who have cancer, they were smokers, about 90, 90 of them were smokers. So that's what the, the, that's the correct way of looking at it. Not that, oh, yeah, there are 1,000 people who smoke, nobody, only 10 got cancer. But that's not the correct statistic or the angle of looking at it. You have to flip it around and look at, look at it from the other side because it's not, um, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. If there are so many people smoking, not everybody get cancer. And why there is a relation between smoking and cancer? And the answer is, you look at 100 people who have cancer, 90 of them were smokers. And that's a very strong uh, causative uh, relationship. And similar thing will happen with COVID guys. Something Mohammed, similar, not exactly. Yeah. Mohammed, you're a man of science. Okay. Um, I could, you're a doctor. I can tell you are a doctor. I know plenty of them. So when you're trying to tell someone to take, doctors are level headed. You talk to a good doctor, they de escalate when it's not a risk, they escalate when it is a risk. They know how to. They know how to do both of those things. Um, what uh, uh, you take, you you have someone that comes into your office that's in relative health, relative mm -hmm. health, right? As health goes, they are. Are you? What mm -hmm. sort of uh, preventative measures do you think are reasonable for your average person that's in relative health? So we're talking to someone that's not doesn't have any of the core morbidities that uh, they're not diabetic, they're not obese. Um, they don't have uh, asthma. They don't have any of those those sort of issues. But they're your average person that has average health. What what is your advice to them to manage a, a disease like this one? Uh, you mean COVID disease? I mean COVID nineteen or the current oh, variant, okay. as you understand it. Yeah, look, um, I I don't like discussing medical stuff because people will glean a wrong message from what I will say. So I would I would say, well, I, I'll tell you what I do. I wear masks when I go out. It's required by law at the moment. So I just follow the law. So that's what I'm doing. So okay, let me, can, I rephrase it? can I rephrase it to remove some liability off of you? No, no, no. I, no, but see, that doesn't work because people will still take the message. So it becomes very tricky for me to 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 say something and hope that people, even if you put a disclaimer, it, people will still. It's it's natural, actually. I don't actually hold it against them because it would be wrong. Because mm -hmm. when it's coming from someone who's trained to be a doctor, even if I say it casually, even if I say it with a disclaimer, people will get the wrong message, and I do not well, want to do that. Well, that makes I, sense. I, I also, well, That's and I also just I also just realized this, right? But uh, uh, Australia has proved to be very authoritarian during this whole thing, um, and how <clears throat> they have uh, treated citizens. Um, speaking out against the issues and against these different different problems, and so I could understand um, in in that sort of element as well. 
Oh, that, that element is there, but my first responsibility is to make mm -hmm. sure that I do no harm. And yeah. the harm done by saying words which can be interpreted in the wrong fashion is just too much. So okay. I'm actually talking on my responsibility as a physician to everybody else. Um, yeah, law is there. I don't want to do anything which is illegal. But my first filter is that my responsibility towards like all of you or any listeners who will listen to anything that we say here, that's the primary responsibility. I must not do something which can, which could mislead them into doing something wrong. Does that make sense? Mohammed, let me let me tee you up, man, because you're not just a doctor. Yeah. We, we've talked before. You're kind of a, a philosopher. Um, back to the purpose of the show, you talked, uh, l uh, let me ask you this. Um, what's a proper view of, of fear, right? There's a time to be scared and and, mm. and take, uh, take preparations and react, right? If I see a horde of people racing at me, right, that should evoke a certain emotional response, right? And there's a time where such an emotional response wouldn't be justified, right? So, so Tony's put together this show tonight on on uh, on the topic of fear. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a doctor. You're you identify as a Muslim, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, and you're Australian, so you're yes. like uh, you're like a triple unicorn in our. In our world. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, very many of you. Okay. So let me ask you, step back from a doctor for a moment, but from a man, yeah. uh, a man that's thoughtful, maybe um, pontificate a little bit on, on the issue of fear as it relates to life facing difficult circumstances. Let, let, me, let, me, let me say something real quick before you start, Mohammed. Australia, when I saw the, the shit going down in Australia, Australia was the last place I thought was going to be like it is right now. Has it, did anybody mm. else recognize that? Like, say, I can't. I thought Australians were like wrestling alligators and crap. I didn't see it coming either, Tony. I, I yeah. didn't see it coming. I, I thought Australia mm. would have been the chillest country when it came down to this whole scene. But it seems to me that it's been one of the roughest countries to be in during this pandemic. Something mm, yeah. I did not expect. No, I think in Australia, yeah. we got sorry. Go on, people. go on, man. Yeah. New Zealand too. Yeah. New Zealand's got some uh, really, really strict stuff. It's like, uh, you know, that's uh, they're still um, indebted to the crown, just like Canada. So Australia, New Zealand, and in Canada, they're basically still colonies. If you look at the Canadian uh, Prime Minister uh, inauguration. He talks about he his allegiances to the queen, you know, and Australia. So they're, you know, America, it has, we're like the rogue child of England. You know, we're like that, you know, that, that kid that just don't listen and we're going to do what we want to do. We're still going to get our clock cleaned because we saw what happened with the uh, Iraq and Kuwait and all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, Australia, it's just yeah, that's just nineteen eighty four George Orwell type of stuff. I mean, they're they're um you know, everybody wants to be like America. As much as America's got things that are wrong with it, we do lead the world in many ways, you know. Yes. Um, but we're still an experiment, you know. But Australia, yeah. Australia no, no, not with not with Mr. Joe Biden, unfortunately. You know, come on, man. You know well, how no, it is. None of these guys run. The, the president doesn't run the, the country. Never has. Yeah, I know. Never I know. Run. Yeah, run, speak. It, it, yeah, it's run by business. It's run by something that we don't see. Power is, yep. you know, you don't see the radio signal that controls mm -hmm. the uh, radio. You don't see the television mm -hmm. signal. You don't see the air mm -hmm. that allows us to breathe. You know, everything mm -hmm. that controls the visible is invisible, you know. So, uh, this is some, you know, this is some invasion of the body snatches type of thing. If you look at that movie, look at the way people are acting that are that are jabbed up, you know, for a better word, because you already know they got artificial intelligence monitoring words, and that's why you see these things acting funny. You know, the technology mm -hmm. is at a point where I wouldn't put it past some type of nanobots because I've noticed the behavior. It's like it's. 
it, it's it's creepy. I had a guy tell me, I mean, this guy is elder, made videos with me on like ancient alien type artifact stuff. And um, he asked me about it. And I said, I tried to evade the question. Like, nah, you know, I'm waiting, you know, on the thing. And he goes, hey, you know, uh, they're going to get you. And he was like, haha. And he laughed. That shit sent chills through. I was just like, oh, I was like, hey, man, I got to go, you know. Yeah. And, and then I talked to somebody else that knew him, this girl. And I go, hey, you know, you know what this Al just told me? And she's just like, she goes, yeah, I don't I don't go over there anymore. And I told her, I said, this is like invasion of the body snatchers. It's like anybody who didn't get it. Uh, what's up, Alexio? Good to see you. Um, and he ascribed my jump on, too. I was just talking to him uh, before. He, he actually told me, he goes, hey, jump on, and he might jump on. But um, nice. this is this is some real serious stuff. This is, you know, the spiritual warfare is in there. You know, it's not a battle of the flesh totally, but... This is like, look at what they're doing. Look at what the the jabbers or the jabbed up for, I don't know what to call them. They're acting like the people who've been replaced by the pods in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. They're, they're, you know, they're not as bad as Dawn of the Dead yet, but they're definitely, there's some type of narrative that's that's turning them toward the people that are still, you know, unjabbed. Just so you know, MD, this this show was inspired by your Saturday night show when when you had talked about um, I had made a comment about they want to keep us in fear that to control us. And yeah. so that was basically the inspiration of this show tonight was was some of the things you were talking about Saturday night. So Thanks. I think this is just going to go a little deeper into it. Thanks, bro. Um, and this is a big part of, you know, the whole fear thing right now, especially that the narrative is against people that now if you're not vaccinated, you're killing people. And it's amazing to me how pe they can say that to us. Yeah. MD, MD, mm -hmm. can you elaborate more on what you mean by um, jab people like sort of spiritually what, what do you mean exactly because i heard i heard of this and i'm i'm sort of meditating smoking on it so to speak about the you know a lot of people talk about the chakras and all i don't necessarily believe in that but i do believe there may be some truth to uh this jab affecting people spiritually and yeah. maybe you can elaborate more on that you have my attention oh thanks man well there's something that just came out too, the pineal gland, right? There was some type of, uh, I, I got to look at the, the research again, where it's some type of crystal formation, like ancient cultures all knew that the pineal gland has something to do with spirituality. It's like a, a th it's called the third eye, right? So when you dissect the brain, it, this pineal gland, this, this third eye, so to speak, has a lens just like the two visual eyes we use, but it's pointed upward. So it points directly toward the top of our head. So we're like, we have an eye in the middle of our brain that sees so-called upwards, but doesn't need to visually have an ocular hole to see through, right? And, you know, it goes back to that old religious saying, uh, in the valley of the blind, the man with one eye will be king right he'll be able to see now people seeing with two eyes right that that can't use their third eye I, I don't know if it's intuition or say a type of a spiritual intuition right um they say fluoride calcifies the pineal gland fluoride is just i mean it's all through the water we see the propaganda of the oh it stops cavities it's proven that it doesn't Canadian experiments prove that in towns that were fluoridated, showing that people, you know, with it and without it still had the same level of cavity. Um, so what they're doing with this thing is there could be something that's um, that's affecting like something with that, because the you know, we all know there is some type of I guess if it's if somebody doesn't want to call it spiritual or soul like like a non-physical type of power. We know that the power of thought exists. You know, we think and ignorance tends to recede. When we learn something, we knowledge has the power to protect us from what we previously didn't know. You know, so if you know that something 
is bad, you know, to avoid it. If you didn't know, you might not avoid it, you know, sort of like sugar and, you know, salt and certain type of things that, you know, those things too, you know, you think about it, the seven deadly sins or vices make a lot of sense. If you fall prey to, you know, uh, your your greed and your gluttony and your lust and your pride and, you know, your, your wrath and envy, um, you start to see how your vibration which could be your spiritual vibration is lowered. When that's lowered, the door opens for other things to control you. Especially, I noticed this with alcohol. I still got to finish this book I was writing years ago. I called it uh, Liquid Slavery. And I equated alcohol. It comes from, and Muhammad might be able to, to uh, confirm this, it comes from the Arabic word al-kul and al-ghul, which means a flesh-eating spirit. Now, Al Ghul transferred into English as Ghoul, which is a flesh eating monster. What do they call it in the store? Wine, spirits, and liquors. What else do they call it? Booze. What does a ghost stare, scare people with? A booze. Go, ghosts will say boo, you know? So when you look at these things, what do people say when they get drunk and they act the fool? Oh, I wasn't acting like myself. I don't know what got into me. So these things, just like the jab might, open doors for something else to possess or to inhabit our vehicle. And, you know, this is like some serious stuff. You know, it, you, you look at this and you say, wow. So this is maybe why ancient cultures said my body is my temple. So you got to keep your body clean and not only clean physically, but clean mentally, because if you allow, you know, if you're watching content that I mean, porn, porn is literally a drug. It's literally a drug, you know, yeah. It, proven to shrink the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which does grow back. But that alone should shock, you know, the shit out of people that wait a minute, you're telling me watching porn every day, three, five times a day for months is going to shrink physically shrink the prefrontal cortex of the of the brain you know which we know the mind isn't the brain the mind might be something that the brain is receiving the mind through something so yeah that's how i think that um you know it's still speculation and theory but it, it has a, a more evidence going toward it to say this is a lady told me years ago she goes you really think that this is a battle of the flesh this goes way beyond being a battle of the flesh you know but yeah yeah, man. I'm glad you're interested in it. Yeah. Yeah, Mohammed, let's go back to Australia. Are you with me? So let's let's yep. get let's get your take on this on on the um, on the spiritual aspect of what's going on. And you being a Muslim. Uh, I, so Yeah, look, fear, fear just talking, let's say, from a religious point non religious point of view. Fear is a good thing. It's just like any tool. Uh, if you use it in moderation, like everything in moderation, including moderation itself. So if you use it with the right sense of judgment and proportion, it can be used for our own benefit. But if we cross the line and become unreasonable, then it can be harmful, which is what these phobias are. And yes, there is the fear that it might be something that can kill us. But then if you cross the line and become too much embroiled in it and it can be counterproductive like any other thing in life including water and oxygen and air that we breathe in so yeah so so i i mean obviously when things change in society to this level that they are right now it are uh, it is going to have an effect on on your you know metaphysical or spiritual being and for those who don't believe in metaphysics and spirit it is your psychological beings your psychological existence is an entity which is um, as kind of a very fragile thing and it doesn't require it requires more than just material input so yeah we do get affected by a lot by whatever goes on around us so no doubt about that <coughs> part of me man to hop on what you and md said is this man i think a lot of people don't understand man uh we're in the age of we no longer have a government. We have two forms of governing body. You know, we have the, in America, you have the state and the federal. Now, the state, in my eyes, is the goon for me. You know what I'm saying? It's like a goon. You know, a goon can be harmed. You know, you've seen the state 
loose power here and there. But the feds are like gods, man. We're in the age of the god for a minute, man. The, the government is all about seeking to have a sacrifice, be it our liberties or our, our comfort. I mean, one of the most dangerous things we don't look at is we're so focused looking at what's going on with the jab, Conan 19, you know, uh, that we're not looking inwards. We, we've become people that are addicted to finding value in something we see. And I think what Muhammad was saying is that with fear, you know, we don't look inwards. We're so focused on, you know, it's like, you know, you ever seen a cat where you jingle that toy in front of it? That's us. We're so focused on looking outwards that we've abandoned our inward look. And, and that's where they've got us. You know, they have us all worrying about who took this jab, who didn't take this jab. You know what I'm saying? And when it comes to the spiritual aspect, I think what MD's saying is that people are now, they've reached their broke. Their, you know, a lot of people are broken. I mean, think about it. You have to take a, a shot for you to, to prove your quote unquote part of the country and for your neighbor. I mean, the level of dishonesty and, and, and uh, you know, mental erosion the government will go to to just have you follow their orders has left a lot of people broken. And I think what MD is saying is the guy's taking a shot, man. He like It's like, what's left? You want my life? You know, a lot of these people are broken, you know, and, and, and they don't have any more purpose and they're so busy just looking outward. You know, we don't look inward anymore. I always tell people, if you want a true challenge, put yourself in a dark room and see what happens to you when you can't run away from your own thoughts, man. And I think we're too focused on looking at everything, man. We're, and, and that's where they get us. You know, what's next? You know, after this jab, what's next now, man? It, we're, we're always looking at them, man. We're not looking in words anymore. I really like what you said there. Put yourself in a dark room where you can't run away from your own thoughts. That's, uh, uh -huh. that's a really good statement. Um, because I think what happens is people are so surrounded by people and things all the time that you're influenced by everybody else. So what's happening is people do not think for themselves anymore. You, you have to have somebody else think for you all the time. Yeah. I mean, think therapist, think psychiatrist. These are people and, you know, professionals. These are people that the normies or the, the masses trust with their life instead of, trusting the temple of God instead of trusting their creator. It's everything but what's inward. Like, like hold the truth said, I like that. Yeah. I want to welcome scribe scribe. How you doing, man? Hey, what's up, Tony? How's it going? What's yeah, up? Guys? What's up? <laughs> Glad to have you on. Good to see you. Yeah. Any input? Have you been listening or? Yeah. Listen to a little bit. I saw the uh, subject. Uh, I believe you, talk, you guys talking about fear. Yeah. Or, um, Basically, like what, what we're talking about now is just the fear of what's going on. I mean, you know, this whole variant and, you know, the whole mass thing is coming back at us. And, you know, I know you're in a different country, I believe, but I don't know what it's like there. Um, we do have a pretty, pretty wide group of guys here all over the country and kind of all over the world right now. So. Yeah, we're we're under um, chemical attack too. If many people don't realize, but things in um, things they spray on crops, things in your water, plastics, soaps, cleaning products, toothpaste. Mm -hmm. All of these, a lot of these things are proven endocrine disruptors already. And MD, I'm sure, knows all about this stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, over time they've had time to perfect these uh, poisons and divvy up and, you know, give them out in proper doses. Sometimes it blows up in their face. You know, what they're doing now is obviously like, you know, all in type of move. And that does put some fear in me to, you know, put some fear in me as far as, okay, now they're going to, you know, do this on a global scale. Okay, this is, this is new. This is interesting. So, uh, but going back to the, the main topic, I would think uh, fear itself, you know, it's, uh, 
what I've learned, it's like knowing what to fear because I've, I've, I've figured out that sometimes they'll try to put that boogeyman in there and say, fear this thing or fear that. But then they're hiding the real thing that you should be fearing or, or a certain guy that you know is not, uh, you know, loud mouth, whatever, pretend he's a big, big shot. But the guy sitting over there in the corner ain't saying a word. It's like that's the guy where they probably should be fearing because, you know, if something does happen, he'll probably just do something. He ain't going to say nothing. Another guy just talking. So I think it's like uh, understanding uh, overcoming fears that, that might be fake, like the boogeyman thing, or knowing what fears have been hidden to us. As in, you know, they ain't telling you that McDonald's hot, you know, burger or whatever got all kinds of chemicals and the water got fluoride and this and, the, and it's like that should be an innate fear in us knowing what it is. But with, since we're so we're too, uh, you know, brainwashed for lack of a better term, it's like we ain't going to know any better. We're not going to we're not going to, you know, uh, go against those people because we we have this, you know, normal trust that we think we're part of a country and we feel that, OK, they're not going to do that to us but yet they do or, or, or cancer patients saying hey it's all right if i radiate you with chemo which is blasting with radiation in order to somehow kill the cancer but we're going to kill you in the process yeah i'm going to fear that shit i'd much rather go with a, a more natural thing where my own body can heal itself because that's really the only doctor you got it's your own body you know other than if you have a limb you know chopped off or something that's different that's an er scenario but most of these things like tumors and cancer and you know everything else uh pneumonia and diabetes all that stuff is uh should be healed using your body not some guy chopping open your you know taking your heart out and all that i mean at that point it's already too late but uh i mean you know, i think uh, i don't want to interrupt you but it's funny when you said tumors i thought about what md had said i think it was the last dream about the chicken McNuggets, what do you call them? Chicken McTumors? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I, I just had, I haven't had a chicken McNugget. The last time I had a chicken McNugget had to be, I can't tell you how many years ago, but I remember biting into it. It actually had a vein in it and it looked like a rubber band when I was pulling it up in my teeth. Oh. And, yeah, and when you were talking about the chicken McNuggets, how they were ground tumors, Chicken yep. tumors, and yep. it just that hit me so hard. I mean, I would, I think I was regurgitating in my mouth when you were saying that. I'm like, that was just brutal to me. But that's that's all a part of like what's going on, what they're feeding us. Yep. You know, it's the same thing. Kind of scribe was talking about, you know, in Primal Man about the chemicals and all this stuff that we're we're putting into our bodies. And you put that crap into your body, how can you heal yourself? You can't. Mm. Yeah, you're right. And Primal Man was right, too. The endocrine disruptors. I mean, sunscreen is yeah. just straight cancer in a bottle. You know, um, yep. it, it the stuff we're being attacked with constantly, it affects our our senses. You know, they attack us. Our sight is attacked by television. Our hearing is attacked by certain types of music. If you just look at the zombies that listen to certain type of music, they're zombified. Uh, music calms the savage beast, also controls it. Um, our hearing, our sight, our touch by, you know, false, you know, touch things. You know, you look at certain clothing. So there's clothing that poison people. There's, there's acrylic and these polymer clothings. The body can't breathe. Natural clothes. There is something, I know it goes, you know, in other religious books, but I think it might have been either in the Torah or the Bible where they talked about certain clothing, like it must be linen or cotton or, you know, the, the specifications of, okay, this is the stuff that's going to allow the body to breathe when the body sweats. If you wear something that doesn't allow that, it's a fact that certain nylons and spandexes will grow a fungus on the body when you wear them. And then people will go to the doctor with eczema and get a chemical for that. Meanwhile, all they had to do is stop wearing the clothing. And the, and the eczema uh, medication will, will bring forth more side effects. So it's a perpetual cycle. Uh, there's a good book called The Medical Mafia that talks about stuff like that. So the sight, the hearing, the 
the touch. The taste, of course, is attacked by drug foods, uh, something as simple as a Jolly Rancher candy. How can a, a child enjoy the taste of an apple? or an orange after being overstimulated by a block of sugar that's crystallized with red 40 and all this other stuff, you know, um, of course, they're not going to want that. Uh, how is a person going to want uh, a normal or, you know, just be satisfied with a woman after porn, you know, overstimulation of this? Um, so the, the the taste, the sight, you know, the the, the smell, of course, we see how you can just walk past the fast food or some, and some of it smells good. You know, you can smell food and say, wow, that smells pretty good, but it's not good for you. Like in New York City, they'll be making these peanuts and roasting them and it smells delicious, right? But it's toxic to the body. You know, you see these guys selling it and it's like, no wonder. I mean, they're selling peanuts. What can you act like beside acting like a monkey after eating shit like that? You know, and when you look at the New, New York City, when we were growing up, we used to call it the concrete jungle. But it's really more like a concrete zoo where all the animals got the keys to their cages. And if you don't listen, you, you go to a cage where you don't got the key. You know, so everybody's got the key to their little cage. And they say New York City in this movie, it said it's hard for New Yorkers to move away. And, and I knew that because I've moved to different countries, different states, always ended up back in New York, right? Because he said, New York is the concentration camp that you guys built into your own prison and now you're the prison guards. And when I look at this, I see that with people, anybody that has an identity with a certain place, that's what they've become. The prison guard. Oh, I'm from here. I'm I'm like, man, I don't even know if I'm from freaking planet Earth. You know, it's like this shit, it, you know, this whole identity thing, it goes back. It, it's the equivalent of some kid standing on a corner thinking that that corner is his, you know. Meanwhile, of course, we got state and government. And really, it seems that state and government were created by church. You know, the separation of church and state is just an illusion. You know, look at the, the all right, the, the president is like the Pope. The Declaration of Independence is the Holy Scriptures and, um, and the doctrine that it pushes. It's very, very similar. It's just, it's like evolution is the scientific religion for the people that are, you know, don't want the, the basic, you know, religion. Mm. Yeah, you were talking, you were talking Go about on. sunscreen earlier, and mm -hmm. we were, I was actually talking to Primal Man, but we were talking about that backstage, and I was telling him that I don't like to use sunscreen anymore because it's poison. It is. I mean, I told him my face my face peeled off this past week, <laughs> but I'd still rather have my face peel off from the sun than to put sunscreen on. And mm -hmm. one of the best sunscreens you can actually use is coconut oil. People don't Very. know that. Real simple. Very Absolutely simple. Right. Yeah, yeah. Coconut Absolutely. oil, one of the best sunscreens you can use. Right. It's cheap and it doesn't have any chemicals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cocoa butter too, like an all natural 100% uh, cocoa butter. It definitely. I, Mega Man MacNut says, what keeps me in New York? You know, when I was younger, and I, I lived in Texas when I was in the military, but also my father lived in Texas for, you know, his whole life practically. And um, uh, when I went to other states, I couldn't believe when I looked at the news. So, you know, when I was in California, when I was 12 and 15, Texas, you know, I was 10 and also 16. I stayed there for about a year. Um, and I'm saying to myself, looking at the news, saying, this looks fake. This looks, it's like, how do people look at this as the news, right? Because New York City, we had, even back then, an overstimulation of our television channels. You know, the tell lie vision, telling lies to your vision. And, and you know, even in Times Square, and, and it hit me back like maybe 15, 18 years ago. I was in Times Square on 42nd Street and 7th Avenue at midnight. And it looks like daytime. It's that lit up. I mean, it's so it's it's actually just bright like daytime. But when you walk two blocks away to 9th Avenue, it's dark again. 
So you start to see that it's like a cardboard town, like a, like a, like a Western town that's built for a movie. That's what Times Square is in New York City, the big Times Square. I noticed the same thing when I went to Amsterdam to Rembrandt Square and also Leidseplein Square. I said, these are like props that get you to think, oh my goodness, look, the city, the city's an illusion, man. The city, and it's a bad illusion is that. The country's really where it's at. Yep. Yeah, point. Well, I mean, another thing they do is, man, it's it, it has to do with um, convenience. You know, we're we're so much prisoners of convenience. Like if Primal Man came out of nowhere and said, "Yo, I hunt my own food," you know, the the first instinct of the majority of people is, "Why? What's wrong with you?" Versus, you know, he's doing his own thing. Versus, he's still seeking out and it's amazing that even today in this modern age the man can still go out and get his own food but anything we see other people doing outside the system we view as negative but but primal man there's food they cut up chicken right in the grocery store you know what i'm saying we've been so accustomed to conveniences that we'll curse out another person just because you know for example if tony tells me you know what man Every month I collect rainwater and I just bathe with rainwater once a month, you know, just to just to get that natural, you know, hit of nature on me. And I'm, I'm going to look at him like a weirdo because anything that's done outside of the system of convenience is seen as negativity rather than, you know, he's an individual. And it's surprising that he's still doing this. You know, bravo. Congratulations. You're able to still practice these type of things in this modern age. You know, it's it's kind of like what MD said is, man, people are, you know, you look at the animals in the zoo, you know, they, they like to say, you know, oh, the tiger doesn't have that much room to move around, but dude, the tiger gets well fed, you know, gets dental, gets everything he's ever wanted except freedom, you know, and that's where we are. That's why I say that zoo metaphor is perfect, man. We're, we're so trapped in a in a system that man anyone who steps outside i mean god forbid scribe is growing tomatoes in his in his yard you know or 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 his front lawn anything seen outside of the system is viewed as negativity man and that, and that's how corrupt it is you know that's why that brother was saying he's off the grid and, and think about when you hear somebody say they're off the grid your first instinct is What's wrong? What's wrong with him? Why is he off the grid versus, no, oh, he wants peace and quiet. He wants to be left alone or he wants his own time. But we automatically see, why are, Why do you want to vacate the system, man? Why do you want to leave the system? Come back, you know? It's, it's a crazy thing, man. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly I've been seeing. It. It's like ever since the internet was born, I was thinking to myself, well, after 9-11 and all that, but... Um, I was thinking to myself, like, okay, we've finally created a system that's worldwide that anyone can jump on here and learn endless knowledge of supposed truth. And then sort of realized, oh, they're starting to, you could really sit with YouTube and Facebook and all these guys censoring knowledge and news and all this stuff. So I'm just like, you know, it makes sense because it's similar to the mainstream sheep versus the people who are trying to unravel the truth and that, unfortunately leads to deep uh, state whatever hidden agendas and all this deep stuff that is hidden and it's the same thing with the internet uh, there's the dark web so if you think about it the dark web is really accounting for that part that they call the Illuminati or whatever it's unseen and the surface is simply trying to say no it's all good up mm -hmm. here everything's working out so when you look at that analogy in the digital versus the physical it's the same thing it literally is the same thing. It's like you have this fake thing on top with Google and all this other stuff, and then below that you have the dark web where the real shit's going on, you know, the real hacking and all that stuff is going on. Um, but it's it's funny how everything has like a mirror image of itself. No matter what you create, we'll always have a yin and a yang. It'll always have negative and positive, no matter what you create. That's like the law of the universe. So, mm -hmm. so when you study it, you understand there's a balance system. And somehow, like, just started kind of realizing, like, you know, we kind of do have it 
good, but at our own detriment, it's like, okay, you have a microwave that they didn't have back in the day. You had to cook food, the fire and all that. You can punch in a few buttons and have your food instantly, whatever. But then there's the, you know, the microwave radiation factor, eating things that have been uh, manipulated using the microwaves that aren't healthy for you. <laughs> so <clears throat> for every good thing, for every instant uh, luxury or dopamine effect you get, there's a bad, just mm -hmm. like with hard drugs. Anything you get hit with like a super blissful dopamine, unfortunately, <laughs> the outcome of that, the result of it is a bad thing. So it's almost like pacing yourself in the middle to not – it's like if you're a billionaire overnight, you can end up dead next week if you're not – if you never knew what, what it was to have money you know, and you start buying a bunch of <clears throat> booze and fast cars and drugs and whatever and you start doing the crazy stuff, whatever – like McAfee style type of stuff, you know, some guys, it's better for them not to have that kind of wealth because they're not meant to, they're not meant to, you know, wield that kind of power. And so I'm thinking to myself like, man, you know, I almost feel more happy when I'm kind of more in the middle. It's like, yeah, it'd be nice to be a millionaire and all this stuff. But at the same time, it comes with, you know, the, the karma with that because it gives you that kind of power. Will you abuse it? So it really comes down to that. So I'm thinking, you know, things are really messed up right now with the whole uh, pandemic stuff and all that. But I'm thinking to myself, is that a result of us getting more powerful technologically and more things, more things uh, that we can uh, literally make our lives so easy? No, there has to be a bad side to it that that kind of balances all that stuff out. So that's the only thing I can think of. I'm thinking about in the 50s, 60s, 40s, like you're talking probably back in the old days. It's like there, there was. We didn't have these abilities we have now with the phones and all this, you know, infinite information, you know, at the touch of your fingertips across the world. So we had that balance system where things were good as far as what you're eating, what you're drinking compared to now, right? But now we have technology that offsets that. It's like I'm thinking it's almost like a game where they have to say, okay, you're going to have all this new technology, but now guess what? Now you're going to have a global pandemic. Now you're going to have all this crazy stuff happen in order to counteract you being able to live that just fat and happy life. We don't want you to live that fat and happy life here for some reason. It's like no matter, and then that goes for millions and billions who are depressed because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing or being forced into something, but yet they're millionaires and billionaires. So I think that's like, there's no way to reach pure bliss. And if you're going to be a shaman or into shaman, you got, you got to be out in the wilderness and accept your fate if you get eaten by a tiger or something, but yet you have these powers of, you know, meditation or whatever, whatever it is. So I'm thinking, uh, that's kind of how it is. The more power you wield, the more it's like rich guys to get sued all the time. Like Bill Gates, guys have like over 500 lawsuits at any time daily. And it's like, are you willing to live with that stress in your life? Or I think it really comes down to that when I think about it. Right. I think I think what Scribe is saying is that you know we don't consider that you know for example when you're in the middle class when you have to work the next day or when you have to be aware of your budget. You know, you're kind of still operating on a, you know, basically I call it the, you know, you're still driving on the road with, with, with uh, speed signs, you know, speed limits because you got to budget yourself. But a certain amount of wealth you get, you no longer have to worry about the speed limit. And what happens is that your body can't keep up with your wealth. So you end up being able to buy, you know, a gallon of Coke every day you know you end up being able to drive or sleep around 24 7 and the body never gets to rest but the mind is just always seeking that stimulation that's why we see certain certain rich kids when they're born into wealth they die much faster because they don't have to slow down in life they're just in the in the fast lane and to go back to what tony said about the the mcnuggets is this is how you know it's such a scam in this country is that I'll give you an example. Ernie Johnson. I don't know if y'all watch inside the NBA. Ernie Johnson had cancer, you know, and uh, he, you know, they radiated whatever, but they didn't, he didn't change the way he eats. Where, how, you know, they don't want you to get healthy is that they just tell you cancer disappeared out of nowhere. You know, it's, it's like cancer is like a ghost. It just sometimes possesses certain people. Versus them pointing out the way you eat, the stress, you know, the chemicals in your life. They don't want you to to look that society is killing you, man. They don't want you to look at that. All these conveniences, like Scribe was saying, have a price. 
And you know, and, and they're all about you ignoring the price. So it's kind of like you're walking on some shards, but they always tell you, don't look at your feet while you're bleeding. Just keep walking. You know, don't don't notice that the you're bleeding because you're walking on these shards, man. And, and that's the society we're in, you know. I have another rabbit hole I want to go down tonight, <clears throat> and I think I have the right panel <laughs> for this. It's fear in the manosphere and how it preys on the fear of men. And this is part of my notes tonight, and this is a topic that I did want to touch on also. I mean, we've been talking about fear in the world, and I definitely think I have the best panel for this right now. Um, so anybody wants to jump in, Primal Man, Gonzo, you've been quiet, but let's talk about how the manosphere preys on the fear of men. Because to me, that's a really, really big one. And that was one of my one of my notes here that has a that's highlighted. So anybody want to start? Well, I, I just want to say something about that is you know, I started out like with the internet marketing thing. I want to do like originally when the internet, you know, this was like what ninety uh, early two thousands, so ninety nine two thousand, and I was just like, okay, all I want, all I know is I just want to do something online to make money. So the whole thing with the ebook and all that, where you make an ebook and then you get Google AdWords and you and you send traffic and you know, it's your own ebook. You sell it and there's no, uh, it's pure profit. As you know, how to deal with physical books. So, and to do that, I, I bought you know a few internet marketing courses during that time, which were actual courses from only a few people that were doing it at the time and then I written then a few years later I realized that all these fake guys came out pretending they knew all this stuff and they created their own version the next thing you know the prices go up a thousand dollars whatever it is and come to find out that it was you know the scam and stuff and then the pyramid scheme stuff and all that and then later on after that you got the game that came out in the Strauss and all that stuff so when that kind of came out, that also made people gravitate to the get rich stuff, and it was easier because now it's now you're a dating coach. Now it's it sounds a little bit more official versus get rich quick or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it had that same connotation of anyone could use that formula and pretend or whatever, and then use that to prey on men just that don't know any better. So it's it's kind of a, com a combination of the get rich thing to get women quick or whatever it is. Uh, scenario of simple scam, you know, scam artist type behavior. That's really what it comes down to. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah. So let's let's. I mean, that's kind of the that's kind of a beginning to the how the manosphere preys on the fear of men. I mean, I've got a lot of input on this. I mean, I've been dealing with this for probably over four years now, and the reason I can talk about this is because I was, I'll say I was a sucker at one point and I'm not afraid to say that I bought into a lot of the bullshit. And I think a lot of the guy, a lot of other guys in the manosphere have and still have, you know? So again, you know, I mean, we talk about the Tony pill and the Tony pill for me is adapting and it's being able to see the truths and even the, the hard truths, which, you know, to me might be, you know, not as tough as some guys would take them, but I just adapt to something that I find is new and I know is real and I go with it. Now, that might be my personality or because of my age, I'm able to do that. But I do know that the manosphere preys on the fear of men. The fear of not having a woman, the fear of being alone, the fear of um, you're never going to live up to this expectation. But now I'm going to give you something that's not true and you are going to buy into that fear. You're going to buy into that narrative, but it's going to cost you money. So anybody else want to touch on it? Go for it. Well, sir, I yeah. mean, the, the way I look at it is this with what Tony said. And to me, what happened when Tony, you know, talked to MD and he came up with the, the Tony pill thing is 
you know, it was a question of how many men are actually willing to adapt, you know, and I think the, the fear comes from, you know, how these men in the manosphere are scamming guys is we know you define your whole life based on a woman validating your existence. So let's, let's feed on that. Let's keep you heading towards that path. You, you got to look at it like this. I say this, a lot of guys in the manosphere don't get it. We have, Every man on this panel has far more experience, you know, uh, serving the system and, you know, simping, whatever you want to call it, than they have going outside of it, you know. And, and I think what they do in the manosphere is they feed off of the fact that these men are broken. You know, like I say, a lot of men in this modern age are like broken glass. You know, you, you could put it all together, but it's still cracked and what they're doing is they position themselves. Like I told a guy once that a lot of guys, the finish line to their life is literally having a woman in their life. So they don't know how to go beyond that. She's with me and that's all I can live for. And the other thing, I think the biggest fear that most men have, and I've encountered it, is that they fear, you know, how MD wrote the black pill, the 48 laws of dating. They actually fear a man like uh, with me doing this whole philosophy thing is they fear men being able to figure them out, being able to identify their problems, you know, and being able to identify where they stick. Like, for example, when I figured out that white pill thing and that holy white pill thing, I'm like, man, I can now talk to primal man and have more respect for him. Because one of the curses of the manosphere is we look for a reason to call somebody a simp and we don't look at, Yo, that man might be religious, man. You're not a simp if you're religious. That's just the man's living by his religious code, you know? And and we've that's the dark hole of the manosphere is that we don't try to understand our behavior patterns. And some guys, I, I had a guy comment on a video on me, and he, he made his own video about it, and he said, man, you know, what, what has the manosphere done for us? And you know, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid of who I. I think his connection is <laughs> going in and out. But um, yeah, he he. Uh, you know what I noticed too? A lot of guys when I wrote the Forty Eight Laws of Dating, um, because I was writing the Black Pill book first, and um, you know, somebody was like. The black pill seems to be a, a prequel to the 48 and i said yeah because i was writing that first and i put it down because i felt that the 48 was needed of a guy and like that, tony, tony coming out <laughs> and saying you know you got to be able to adapt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the camera froze up bad. and you, it was cut off for like maybe um, a <laughs> but yeah, my bad just, my bad i mean the amount of the amount of like hate mail and intimidation and you know pictures of threatening stuff and you know i noticed a lot of it it definitely directly came from rollo using hogwood you know because we already saw the way hogwood was his little chihuahua attack dog against anthony johnson and other people so that type of uh fear that they tried to put in you know and the mistake they made was they were used to intimidating people and then they didn't realize that they're not gonna you know they haven't gotten anywhere with that i mean i'd laugh at it it's it's like really funny it's i kind of feel like darth vader on rogue one when he came onto the ship and just started slicing guys on the ceiling with lightsabers until they ran away with the plans still hunted them down to the planet and you know just let off on them and these guys that's the only thing that would tame these animals. And that's why I have been so fierce on them. I mean, all they had to do was say, look, yeah, the line is drawn at taking pictures of children. You know, that's it. We gotta just eject this piece of shit from the manosphere. But no, pieces of shit congregate in a toilet. And that's why all of the followers, Rolo Tomasi is a piece of shit. And you know, see these, you know what I noticed that was funny? First it was, oh, fight me and do this and that. And I'm wondering, well, where is all of that? 
you know now all of a sudden it's it's oh you know i'm gonna tell or some shit like the little pussies that they are but i'm like what happened to you know punching me in the face and when you see what happened to that see because they know that they'll get their fucking head bit off and spit back at them they finally found a man that's not afraid of them now i'm not going to waste any more time you know bothering with them that's why you know probably two weeks or something i'm going to go into the knowledge channel and not mention them again they can say what they want to say fine but i've already seen the cowardice i mean to contact people's children their wives i mean other people in the manosphere should look at this and be like that is pathetic and anyone who follows them so i mean we we, we had all that <clears throat> crazy stuff you know going on in the background but we didn't we, we really get to see it for what it was when uh bulldog mindset came on and people got to really see an actual debate of okay you know explain the game how this works and all this other stuff uh, i just remember him saying oh women don't approach you know and uh, you have to be the guy that approaches and game and all this other stuff I was like man that's not what i what i've experienced in my life like, you know, so i got deeper and asked him certain questions and he kind of deviated from that and started talking about oh, like all this money and whatever and all that so when you start challenging their uh, so-called uh, uh, dating course, or whatever it is they're selling, or their coaching, or whatever, uh, they'll resort to, "Oh, I made all this money." It's like, no, I just asked you about how the game works or how this works, and you know, mm -hmm. because that's all they have. They don't know how to answer the question because they don't know. And like when Bulldog's thing, where we call him a phantom insult because in high school, he never, you know, women never approached him, never talked to him, so he. Had to go through that and then now all of a sudden he's don juan and getting all these women so and i'm telling him look i i know for a fact that that doesn't happen like that <laughs> just by knowing certain friends doing it myself when i was in high school i just know that things don't just uh you know if you're a certain way people are gonna see that regardless how much acting or whatever it is or game or whatever it is you try to do because they're gonna see it eventually that you're you're not being sincere. You're not being real. The women's, women especially detect that faster than anyone else, you know, faster than men. So when I start explaining that, you know, women are the ones that actually are gaming the men. And you have to be kind of like the prize because you have to allow her to think that she caught you. In his mind, it's like, no, no, that's, you know, it's not that way. The guy has to be the one to force it on the woman. And it's like, no, in the end, she has to be the one that feels that she got a reward. And the only way you're going to do that is by demonstrating that you're, you're a man in front of her, right? You have to demonstrate some type of manly traits for her to, to qualify you as, okay, this is the guy, you know, that I want to spend the rest of my life with. In order for her to even qualify you is that she has to see that. So when they talk about game and all this lies and manipulation, it's yeah. like you're not demonstrating nothing. You're just talking. And she's going to hear that. And she's going to know exactly what you're talking about. It's like, oh, this guy just wants to talk. So that's the whole misconception that could lead guys down, you know, to a very bad situation where they're thinking that's how it's done naturally. But in reality, they're getting rejected. Next thing you know, they want to do some harm or something because now they're feeling like they're different from everyone else. And now they're just ready to do crazy stuff. So in my mind, that's a psychological attack on men where it's in the name of making money, making fast money for these guys because that's all they, they're looking at. So if you attack them, they think, oh, you're attacking my business, you're attacking my thing. No, but you're actually messing up men by doing this. You're not telling the truth of yeah. what's going on. So I think that's the biggest you know, problem in the whole it's, 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 it's preying off the their fear, a man's fear of not being able to get a woman is what it is. Incel mm -hmm. TV said it best. He said, it's preying on the misery of men. And that's what they do. Incel TV, you know, hey, nobody's going to agree on everything, but I got to give the guy. He actually inspired the name for the stream I did that you said inspired you for this stream. Yeah. You know, because he showed the ugly laws. He showed the reality. And, you know, it's funny how Scribe made the point with Bulldog. Um, you know, who else shows the, oh, this is what I have and Hogwood showing his fake gold chain, his fake Versace and all of this stuff. And you look at that and you start to see a pathetic, hollow child that was ass raped by his stepfather. And he still hasn't gotten over that. You know, he talked about that trauma 
on his on on his podcast, and I know it hit home. I know it. I hit the soul on him. I, I love it. it I, I love that because he was talking about his aunt Millie and all of that. You know, cucumber dildo screwing him, all of that. You know, so he knows that we got his number. You know, and and the thing is, when Scribe and I looked into Rolo Tomasi's ad words and saw that they were advertising directly to gay men, that blew the lid off their whole shit. And you know. I got to admit, Bulldog was one of the more respectful guys that didn't come out yelling and all of that. And whatever he chooses with his orientation is fine. I mean, I still, from what I've seen, I don't see the guy being straight. Uh, same thing with Hogwood and Rolo. Rolo's definitely got sugar in his tank. People have seen <laughs> the videos here. Yeah, that, that guy, yeah, definitely. Sugar in his tank. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. yeah. It's and, called and the portable the, portable closet, man. Portable yeah, closet. portable closet. They they carried around. I mean, his look at his hats. His whole hat selection. You know, it's like ninety five degrees in Florida, and he's wearing a, a a ski cap. Not even just a light thin hat. I you remember know? him when he actually used to look like a man. I mean, I do. <laughs> I, I remember him in, in two thousand and eighteen when he had a regular haircut was on stage at 21 and looked like a man. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the the weird transformation. And again, mm -hmm. I know, you know, I mean, you know, I know these guys, I know Rolo Tomasi personally. I mean, I have his phone number in my in my phone. I know Richard Cooper personally. I know Bulldog personally. I know all these guys personally. Um, there's a few guys I will stick up for, and that's 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 John Sanmez. I think John just can't answer the question sometimes. And I've mentioned this before. John, just say yes or no. Um, yeah. You know, and and <laughs> I, I just wish sometimes he would just answer the question. Again, John, if you're watching, who knows? You're welcome to come on, of course. Rollo, I know you're lurking in the background always. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I still would love to see a – a rational debate between a male and a man, between uh, MD and Rolo, and I did say a male and a man, and I'm sure we know who I'm referring to. But you know, after my interview with with MD, you know, Rolo pasted my a picture of me all over his Instagram, his Twitter, his 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 YouTube community, without actually adding me. Go ahead and tag me in it. Ta if you're going to put my picture tag me in it. I, mean, I think that's only fair. In other words, have some balls, go ahead and do it. I tagged him in my community post. I know he read it because when you're tagged, you get a notification that let's have a, let's have a rational debate. Let's talk. Let's have MD and Rolo Tomasi on the same stream. I will moderate like a presidential debate and we'll see what happens. But no, I won't. know the fact. I would pay. I would pay to see that. I would pay to see it too. Maybe we'll do but, and we'll donate the money to veterans or something. But I no. think that that would be that would be a. I think it's necessary. I've said this before. I think it is a necessary debate that is needed for the manosphere because it's going to be where the. You know, it's going to be where, what do they call it, where the bear hits the buckwheat, I guess they call it. It's it, <laughs> it's going to be and it should be something that the manosphere needs. Yeah, no, it definitely but, can. If he wants to bring Richard Cooper on for his uh, corner man or something, he can do that. I mean, neither one of them <laughs> have a leg to stand on. I mean, it, when I look at it, I say... These are the guys that are. If, just if he wants to be Cooper, I'll be there right, right next to you, brother. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean they there's, they can't there's deal the answer with right there. There's the answer. Th their fear of of everything we did it just spoke loudly when you know they sent Pigwood and other guys and realized they couldn't intimidate. Uh, when Scribe and I started doing this for the last ten months now, they they were trying to attack him. But then they realized they couldn't put fear in him either. So now they are just running scared. And, you know, they got two, maybe three weeks. Because after that, once I go and start doing just pure knowledge, I'm, I'm going to leave the manosphere to everybody else. You know, like you hold the truth. I think 
X Viper started a channel today. I just promoted it. He wants to try Saturday nights as well because I know it's a big chunk. I mean, I might even stream knowledge earlier Saturday because a friend of mine said he won't be able to make Sunday night shows because of his work schedule Monday. So I said I might stream Saturday and Sunday, but much shorter, two hours and a strictly limited show because it'll just be talking about everything with health and nutrition, with uh, conspiracy, with ancient civilization, nothing to do with dating and relationship, you know, almost just leaving all of this behind, not mentioning none of these guys that, I, you know, I won't mention the other one tonight, even though they're making, you know, whatever video, whatever. Hopefully they'll... But, hold hold know, on, MD. Hold on, MD and, and Tony. Dude, who am, I, who am I supposed to get my tomatoes from then if you guys are going to go after Rolo tomatoes like that? <laughs> by tomatoes, I mean my red pill. Who am I supposed to get my single mother pickup advice from if, if you guys are going to go after Richard Cooper like that? Dude, come on, man. You guys can be doing that. So I got I to gotta know. I got to get those... I gotta get enough dose of red pill, like black pill, is too much for me, dude. I can't, I can't maintain frame no more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, I mean, Primal Man will tell you. We had a conversation yesterday privately, and I'll, I, you know, I'll bring this part up, and and I had told him that I have destroyed a couple, I'll say a couple of uh, good relationships I could have had with women, because what what did I call myself, Primal Man? Remember in that conversation, a red pilled retard. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And and I I blame that on my my thought process. I, I believe there are parts of the red pill that are I think are are parts of the black pill too. You got a thought process, all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So but it's because of my um we'll call it my conditioning, some of my red pill conditioning, which really, mm -hmm. really fucked up a couple of relationships that could have been good, but it was because of that, that ideology or whatever that I had followed. I don't even want to say followed, but had adopted mm -hmm. um, yeah. that had, you know, really yeah. messed up. Well, messed, and, and I'm accountable to myself because a lot of guys can't say that. I'm not going to blame it on the woman because and not all the time, not all, but it was my fault. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know, but Tony, you know, man. And, and that that's the thing that protects you because see, Tony is strong. He knows himself. He holds himself accountable. Now, imagine a guy who's 20 or 25 that takes Rolo's advice with that and realizes that the red pill stuff, you know, the parts that screwed him up, he would be, he would turn into a misogynist. He, he could go ER. He would be very angry. You know, Tony can I, hold. I was that guy. Uh, MD, I was, uh, I, I came to you guys. I would say, I have to say that, uh, you know, I did go through this red pill phase and I did go through all of dating coaches. phase. not that I, 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 in back of my mind, I really didn't, you know, have that. Okay. This, it, I mean, I do hear it, but it was it wasn't making sense to me. You know what I mean? Now mm -hmm. that's how I kind of came across, uh, you know, the the black pill stuff. You know what I mean? Like it was a journey for me. So I would say that you know started from Alex Jones, and now I ended up at Black Pill. You know, mm -hmm. and and uh, I, 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 you know, so it's it's just a, I guess it, that's how you come across. But the the guy that you're describing, you know, like 25 year old, you know, listening to all this bullshit and you know, being depressed or whatever. I did go through that stage in life, you know, but finally I did come to the truth and nothing but the truth. Like Insult TV says, you know, let the black pill guide you. And you know, by the black pill, he means the truth. Let the truth guide you. Yes. Yeah. And you know, guys have written me and told me that they listened to Dirty Eddie, Donovan Sharp, and they were not only getting, hating regular women in the dating field, they were, they were starting to hate their siblings, their sisters, their mothers, yep. their aunts. And they said, as they listened to the stream, they healed because when you, when you tell guys the truth about dating relationships, you also got to tell them, look, you got to hold yourself accountable. Cause if you don't hold yourself accountable, you're going to hold somebody which you know ain't you i mean we're accountable for everything what's the uh roman greek saying he who will be deceived let him you know so it's up to us to prevent that it's in america that equates to 
buyer beware. Let the buyer beware. You, you know, this self accountability that Tony speaks about is so important. That's one of the teachings that need to be accompanied with any bit of knowledge that a man mm -hmm. gets because he will get that rage and say, hey, when you get that rage, just remember you have to hold yourself accountable. Don't get that rage and get mad at somebody else. You know, so yeah, yeah that's, that's MD, a, MD uh, man. That's exactly, that's precisely what the schools and college or whatever they proclaim is your path of success to make money or whatever does not teach you any of that. Doesn't even teach you money. Doesn't teach you how taxes work. Doesn't teach you how bank works. Doesn't teach, I mean, nothing. When you came out of high school, you came out of college, you know, absolutely nothing. All that stuff had to be either got to hire somebody or you got to learn it yourself. They don't teach you the basics of, <clears throat> excuse me, the basics of life. And I can't have to keep going back to like the Native Americans. That's the only ones I know of. It's like those kids are being taught when they're three, four, five years old. By the time they're 18, again, they are masters at what they do. We are not masters at what we do. At 18, we just have to choose a career path that we don't know what the hell is going to happen. Whoa. This is how... This is how messed up society has gotten to the point where we are still children be, beyond 18. You know, if you look at the native or ancient tribes, you're a man by the time you're 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. nowadays it's like you ain't a man. So who, I mean, you might be 50, you still ain't a man. It's like it's that bad. <laughs> I mean, how many yeah. dudes are old? Like, this dude is still like a child. Like, wow, that's how low we have gone. This is how oh, we all, we're all technologically super high power, whatever. Yeah, but you don't got no sense. You know how to push a button. That's all you know how to do. You don't know how to grow food. You don't know how to, you know, defend the thing. It's like, it's like that's all you know how to do now is push a button, a few buttons, and here it comes, and it's easy, easy. Everything's easy, right? But there's a consequence to being ignorant. There's a consequence to that. Even though you got that power, there's a consequence to that. It's like even if I'm a king or a billionaire, a trillionaire, but I allow ignorance, as in I'm just pushing a few buttons, I get what I want, and that's it. I allow myself to get stupider over time. If I don't stay hungry, if I don't allow the fire to rain the way it's supposed to, my, my natural state, I will, de I will degrade. I will die much sooner because I don't have that. And, and, and you know, Scribe? Mm -hmm. no, one of the things I was saying is that the – and I've, told, I, I've talked with you know Gene. We talk quite a bit. But I said – I was saying that the black pill – the only issue I have with the black pill is the name because black pill outside of the manosphere tends to be nihilistic. And people will say, I don't want to be black pilled about that. OK, yeah. but in the manosphere, the black pill. And I've told Gene this <coughs> is really the new red pill is, is what it is, because what's happening yeah. is it's canceling out. It's canceling out a lot of the false narratives that are proposed in the red pill. And the, I, I, the truth is always going to win, the truth no matter what. And I know me and Gene have had conversations about this that I had said, you have more in common, you know, like Gene being a Christian, me being a Christian guy, we have more in common with the black pill than we do with the red pill. The, the, and, and, and I have to say this to people that when you say, you know, black pilled or red pilled, it's not a lifestyle. And I think that's where the that's where the disconnect comes in. It's metaphors for life. It's 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 basically teachings to live by is what it is. It's not it's not a religion, it's not a cult, it's just it's just trying to find the truth. It's really simple. I mean, it, it's simply observational truth, observation that anyone can look at that's happening to you right now as we speak. You can go out tomorrow and observe certain men and women how attractive they are that makes a difference on who they get with and all that and then you have the simps lined up there you, you see the whole thing to the point where it's so bad you got guys lined up outside the women's bathroom whatever that that whole creepy thing so when you see the evidence in front of your face and they're trying to tell you no man it's it's all good it's same thing with the food and everything else it's like if you already know at this point all this stuff is not what they saying it is it's like wow this is worse than a you know <laughs> any type any type of movie I can think of, like this goes, so, it's so massive. Uh, the amount of lies and deception, it's. Uh, well, it's able that, to be applied to everything. Like Tony now is black pilled on Chicken McNuggets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's, like, that's on a micro scale. <laughs> and, uh, 
And then when you look but, at everything else on a micro scale, and you realize all this stuff is fake, and we're not going by the natural order of things. Then you realize, like, wow, this is like uh, kind of a nightmare in a way. I mean, but at the same time, it kind of empowers you to learn more, and that's where that 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 rush of truth. You just can't hold it back. You just have to learn more because now you realize you've been lied to your entire life. The, so the, the this black is, pill. This is where this is where the black pill comes in. And it's showing you truth through observation. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, promise. But well, the black, I, the black pill is the final boss before the God pill. Well, <laughs> but you know, let, let me say this. Let me say this real quick. Now, I know you're back going back of scribe and you, Tony. You know, uh, ignorance is a bliss. You know, mm -hmm. imagine if and people and this can be hard. Like even if if us guys talking about this, or talking about the truth, that it is hard to take in. You know, and that's why majority of people do choose to also be ignorant. You know, so that's why that's a, it's a really good saying. You know, ignorance is bliss because you are you do have a better quality of life. You know, you're not banging your head against the wall. You know, knowing you know knowing as much as you can and and knowing knowing the truth that that how ugly it could be. You know, and one more one more thing I would say that you know you guys being Christian, you know, uh, Gene and and Tony and. You know, and, and we have men from all different walks of life, from different countries, different states. You guys are Christians. You know, I'm, I come from a Muslim background. But I'm closer to you guys, you know, than I would be with, with real life community and my friends. Because, you know, things that I could talk to hold the truth about, you know, or MD or scribe. Like, this is something that I really can't, you know, really talk to anybody about because they do not have understanding. Of this you know if i discuss things over here you me mentally you, we are no matter where we come from we are actually closer you know we have a stronger bond in a way than i would with in a in a real life community real, real life you know in general i would say you yep. i mean i never thought uh, that i remember well, the well, with, me, with, oh, go on, go on, with michael foster and md on the, i never thought that that would ever happen so mm -hmm. i brought you guys together and you know, I, lo I look back at that first time that MD and Michael Foster were on the same stream and how you guys got along. And I'm going to say that being, you know, Christian guy, primal man, Michael Foster, that the original black pill is is religion, is Christianity, because uh -huh. it, it really is the truth. So that's the that's why I think a Christian belief and black pill truths really go together way more than people think i agree with that yeah mm -hmm. yeah a lot of religious uh truths on the whole like there's going to be a commonality um you know there's something that goes beyond the physical and if you don't have that that you're much easier to control you know like even if somebody says look all right i'm gonna you know chill out on whatever church or synagogue or mosque that they go to they're still going to hold the spirituality you know they're still going to hold that that higher power which makes it harder for other men to control them it's like how scribe was saying we gotta you know if you got money and all of that but you, you can push a button and you don't if you don't have that labor and toil or that you know having to do something i mean that's called sloth you know sloth sloth even can be equated to voting, you know, because when you vote for someone, you expect them to do the work for you. So when I look at these, you know, for lack of a better word, religious templates, because, you know, those uh, so-called seven deadly sins do go into other religions to say, yeah, of course, you shouldn't be greedy. You shouldn't be lustful. You should, you know, you have to control that. You have to temper that. Your sloth is very important, you know, like, in, you know, the Bible, but other religious books must say that, you know, you should, you know, you work, you toil, you, you toil in the fields, you know, to create, to plant your food, you know, the hard day work actually works the body as well. We know that physical work in the body lets you sleep well, you know, people say that they can't sleep, but they don't exercise, they don't do any work. You know, it's like, well, how do you expect to sleep well, you know, and then you're eating, you know, stuff that ain't good on top of that. So it's really when you look at these things, you start to say, wow, you know, um, 
it it really contemplating existence is very important because it feeds the mind we eat nutritious food to feed the body and then something has to feed the soul or the spirit or the the non-corporeal part of us which the religion of evolution is saying don't worry about that be a materialist right but when you look at it it's such a lie because it's saying oh it's based on material but everything they do is really destroying the material treasures of the earth i mean why would you poison the water why would you poison the land so you say it's based on materialism, but yet you destroy the materialism, saying that it's in the name of science, the economy, right? Which the business, basically. The GDP of any country goes up when they destroy the forest. What type of sense does that make? You know, it's not sustainable. Um, these are things that, you know, really need to be thought about. And then also in many religious institutions, we have to hold each other accountable too, because we see that we're still susceptible to the vices where you see corruption treatment again. Because, you know, people can, you know, that, that, that power that comes in, it's not that power corrupts, the corrupted are drawn to power. So the power can show, you know, okay, I needed to work on some of these flaws. When you lose the power, you say, okay, I, I, I it must have went to my head or whatever. But really, someone who has seen that lesson is more better to be fitted to a leadership position again, because he's went through the problem of saying, man, I couldn't control it. But now I learned from that lesson. You know, it's kind of like the way some power, like the ring and the Lord of the Rings, nobody can wield it i mean the the, the you know you you're because, because it's misunderstood it's like i can use a gun to pro in proper way or the proper way or a knife or whatever or a simple utensil like a spoon or a fork it's what my what my you know reality of what i think it should be used for well i was thinking back earlier i was like if someone asked me if i'm republican or democrat or libertarian or this or that i would look at them and say mate okay living this long is seen from what i'm seeing i can't take any side so i want to go with something called a syncretist i don't know if you guys know what a syncretist is basically it's someone that takes all religions all cultures all history of all the different countries the world existence and puts it all compares them and tries to find a common denominator out of these different religions and cultures and countries and everything in existence and astrology and everything else chinese astrology whatever astrology western you know, all everything and tries to find a common denominator because when you start doing that, you start seeing similarities in all the different religions. Christianity with Hinduism and Buddhism are very similar. You'll see similar, they, they call them different names and different things. But when you figure it out, oh, they're talking about that. They're talking about the same thing. They're talking about the firmament. They're talking about the as above, so low. They're talking about, you know, the threes of the regs. It's all in there. It's, all, it's there's a pattern. And when you look at that pattern, that's the only way I've been able to reveal the truth because you can never go with one. You have to observe everything literally as much as you can throughout this lifetime, as much life as you have, to be able to compare everything and see what the common denominator is. And I believe if you can achieve something like that, you'll definitely have a better idea than most people of what's really going on or to find out who's really controlling, you know, if it's coming from a single source or if all these gods are involved because... It, you just imagine this. We're on the Western side. We're thinking Jesus Christ or God is going to do something about whatever's going on with Iraq or whatever. Then you go to Iraq and then or India. And then you have Krishna and Vishnu. What are they going to do about this? And then you go to Buddha and what, what's he going to? It's it's like if you compare all those things. That part doesn't make sense. But when you see that there's a design, a conceptual intellectual design on what is happening through media through. Uh, Everything the, the the laws that are passing currently, you you just look at the timeline, look at all those things happening, and you kind of compare, and you kind of compare what's what's going on in the world. Not, not, that's all right. You compare that with not only what's going on in the U.S. but the entire world, and you put it together, and you you already know about the religions and everything else. You start getting an idea of what's really going on. That there's a controlled opposition that what they speak of everyone exists i mean every, i'm sorry everyone agrees everyone agrees on ghosts for example spirits and demons right what religion doesn't agree upon that they agree upon a higher power you know a godhead right what religion see, there's all these patterns that they all agree 
but there's mm-hmm. simply different variable names for each of these entities and whatever it is. But they're using it in order to have a chess. In, they're, they're using it in order for us to go against each other. They're not yeah. unifying us at all. This is why we have separate religions. If this is a unification, there would only be one source of knowledge, which is truth. There, would, there wouldn't be any of the segregation between not only religion, but race and color and everything else. I there think there was somebody that said the highest form. Uh, some people look at God as truth, you know, and it's not, it's kind of like when we came together and uh, Mike Forster was here and everything. We look at the things, and even when I was on uh, Anthony Johnson's stream with the two dating coaches, and I said, look, we can look at the stuff we agree with instead of looking the stuff that we're going to not agree with, right? Because it's not going to be in dis- agreeing to disagree, like Tony said. It's going to be one of us is either agreeing with the evidence and the other one isn't, or we're both not agreeing with the evidence. It's it's going to be that. It's not disagreeing to, you know, no, it, it, it has logically, that's the way it is. So with religion, and Scribe made a good point, if people look at the stuff that's in common, because I've spoke with Christian, Muslims, Judeans, Hindus, tribal people, uh, and the one thing they have in common, okay, is the belief in a higher power. The natives really, an Egyptian uh, ancient archeology span have is uh, more than just a higher power. The natives had a difference between the great spirit and the creator. So those were two differences, a physical, something that creates the physical as opposed to something that isn't physical at all. It's a great spirit. But then we go into the Abrahamic religions. The commonalities are astounding. Raphael, Gabriel, you know, Mikael, they're in all of the Abrahamic, you know, if anything, they should look at that as a commonality, say, okay, we got these things in common. Uh, We have the higher power in common. Uh, Most of them have the Trinity. Hinduism even has a Trinity. They call it the Trimurti. It's a Brahma is the is the creator, Vishnu is the preserver, and Shiva is the destroyer. And those are the three, the Trinity. So when you look at the Trimurti, you look at the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in Christianity, you look at the Judaism, and then you know you start to say, okay, we have these things in common. Let's try to keep these together. And that's going to build a bridge to peace right there to say okay we have we have differences you guys do this this way we do it this way but these things we have in common you know scribe made a really good point about that i mean it, it and then of course the ancient civilization question i mean without a doubt you know things line up like there are things you know in the bible which of course is in you know quran and torah as well that do add up to a global flood you know it it really does i mean and that's something that science doesn't want to admit because what does it do it gives religion a foothold for truth they are so scared of religion having any truth in it that they'll lie to dispel that you know just uh, the the fact that you have to separate scientists scientists from religion in the first place already means there's a separation of knowledge and if you combine those two now you're living on a uh, abundant, you know, at your at your at your highest potential. Whereas if you split the two and you have to choose a side, you will never reach that level. And uh, mm-hmm. that's what I'm kind of been pursuing. It's like if you lo- if you understand both sides. Yeah. And I want to let Oppo know that I don't have a problem with any of these guys anymore. I don't know what they think, but when I leave. I will. I'm telling guys, look, please, you know, uh, private your videos, delete them, whatever. Don't. I, I ho- can only hope that there is some type of peace that can come, Oppo. I mean, I, I don't. I'm just. It's. It, you know, hopefully, I mean, these guys will stop, you know, battling with each other. I'm, I mean, I, I don't have, you know, no animosity. I mean, toward. they should be. They should be feeling lucky. You decided uh, to, you know, do this, you know, and. The fact yeah, you even not, give them, you give them your time, your presence of knowledge, even though they got their ass whooped, they're gonna learn something. Yeah, and, and I've helped. Might not be right now. They might learn that shit later on, ten years down the line, but yeah. they're gonna remember that. Yeah, they're gonna remember Hold that on. ass whooping, you know, for a reason. Uh, 
Well, well, I mean, we, we got to understand, man. They're adults, man. We, our problem is, you know, we keep hoping an adult, you know, who's decided his decision will change. You know, we got to accept the path they're going on. You know, certain people are just scum. Certain people, man, they, the world won't be a better place or they won't change until, you know, that, that they're beheaded, man. It's just the path they're chosen. But uh, another thing I want to bring up, and, you know, shout out to Tony Bruno, man, because, you know, this is how it's supposed to be, man. We don't agree on everything, but we understand we're not physically harming or threatening each other. We have a conversation. And to me, that's what, when Tony brought up that adapting thing, it made me look at, you know, when I was talking to Primal Man, it made me realize, you know, Primal Man, that's that's a, that's a holy white pure man. That's a religious man. And a question I want to ask primal man is as religious man and in the manosphere, you know, lean on your religion and they kind of are they offended by the fact that you're leaning on your faith to decide your decisions? And is it easier or harder? to talk to people because you're, you know, you're so intact with your faith. Hey, the fear of you is breaking up. Repeat that question just really quick. No, no, I'm just saying what you, you being a religious man, is it harder for you to talk to other people where you lean on your faith? You know what I'm saying? You're leaning more on your faith to guide you than other, you know, than the other aspects of life, you know? Yeah, it's been easier or harder. Yeah, it's been hard for me to have your typical conversations with people ever since I was a kid because I I was raised in a home without television. That's the truth. My parents did not have a TV in the house my entire childhood. So I, I didn't know much about pop culture. I couldn't I couldn't converse in those type of topics. But at the same time, I was too young to understand what I was really being taught and, you know, in church and about and about God and those things. As I've gotten older, the more I speak to intelligent men like y'all, no, it's not very difficult. I talk to Tony all the time and me and him both, like we're on the same page a lot of times when it comes to issues and, and how God plays into that. And um, how, uh, you know, just God, the whole God thing all together. So no, it's not that difficult now, especially talking to you fellas. But it, it was when I was much younger and foolish and didn't know what I was anything about what I was being taught. And I'm still learning, always still but learning. The reality is also, if you were to go on a a typical, we'll say a typical red pill stream, I'm not going to name any names. Oh, yeah. They, you, would get, you would get destroyed. Yeah, they, they just wouldn't would hear be, it. You would, be, you would be wrong 100%. Your I, I don't, I don't know win. about I don't know about that, Tony, because, I mean, from what I've seen and how I grew up, you know, he said that he got robbed. Of his child. I think he lived the real childhood. You lived the real yeah. shit because you. Wanted, yeah, I didn't say I got robbed of my childhood at all. You, like, you lived the proper, the proper, you know, yeah. you call it the like, like, like yeah. you know, the graph where it's going up. It's not shooting up where you're a kid, and all of a sudden you're thrown into this crazy millions of ads of video games and movies and music and all this other crazy stuff. Like, I had to sneak an Xbox into my house when I was like 25 or 24. I was still living see, at and, home. And that's why you remember. <laughs> and that's why you remember that. That's why you remember that because it's like if you had it all the time, you don't remember it. Like most time I remember when I was a kid, yeah, playing video games and stuff, but I remember the times when I went out and actually did stuff or I got or felt, you know, or broke my arm or something. On the Boy Scouts or whatever it is, I remember those things. But it's like when I'm in my room playing video games, or whatever. I don't remember really nothing of that. I only remember like the real stuff that happened when I was in the real world. So the fact you got to live that way, I think that's more power to you, brother. That's definitely you. It's a blessing. Have... Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's a plus, man. It is. Even though, I, even though I love video games and all the crazy stuff and movies and all that, I'm thinking like now that I'm older, I'm like, damn, that would have been better because I would have enjoyed things more. It's like once really, you get out, of primal man it, because it, of his, his belief. Yeah, you know? because when you're a kid watching movies and all this crazy stuff, you get burned out. Mm -hmm. So you don't. There's not a progression of exploration. <laughs> so when you have movies and TV and radio and, and everything else hitting you at one time, there's no progression of attention, and you literally just. That's why you got kids 13, 14, ODing on drugs and. 
just not knowing what to do. They're not, they don't, they haven't lived the right, the right path of life to keep them exploring, but not so crazy where now all of a sudden you're, you're hanging out with guys that do heroin or whatever. Or some Yeah. Whatever. Those, those same kids I couldn't converse with in school, you know, are, are the same people now. And I've been spared. I've been spared my um, share of, you know, hardships. I've been spared through a lot of, from a lot of things, but some of them are, man, they're, they're in bad places in life, you know? And those are the kids that I was just like, man, I, I just, I just want to be a normal kid and just be able to converse with these conversations, but didn't realize that it was a blessing later on that I, I, I didn't know about these, all these movie references but, and all of these video games and and, but were you, and, and parties and you know drugs and alcohol and all this kind of stuff. Right. But did you have any other friends that kind of grew up the way you did? Like Yeah, of that? course. Of course. So I those to guys church. you can definitely yeah. relate to. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I was sort of in the middle because I was a little too I was more I was too secular for the church friends, but still couldn't fit in quite with the you know, with the uh, no, with the normal kids. <laughs> hey, that's the best place to be in the middle. We all end up in the middle. But it's interesting, yeah. yeah. That, that he was, you got comfortable with yourself, and that's the problem that the red pill community will have that they can't influence you. It's like you look at Eric Von Daniken, who basically wrote *Chariots of the Gods*, one of the most successful books ever written about alien theory. He even said on film, he goes, he started out as a biblical scholar reading the Bible in Latin and other languages to where, you know, he can interpret things just on another level, like, you know, Luke Safarius being the light bearer, you know, and the meaning of certain things. And he said on an interview once, he said, listen, I never lost my faith in God. And now this is like the leader in the ancient alien community. He said that what he found out only strengthened his belief. He said his God, when the Israelites said that they needed to build a fence around the mountain for God to land, he goes, my God doesn't travel in a spaceship. He goes, he doesn't need the people to build a fence around the mountain to land on the mountain. And these mysteries in the religious text is what put him on his journey, on the ancient alien journey. And he's always said, but it never, ever shook his faith in a higher power. And that's like what primal man has. He has an unshakable faith that they're really, they're afraid of it. They'll never admit it. They won't admit it because it'll give him the upper hand. Just the I, don't know if, I don't know if you fellas know, but I'm just now getting back into my faith. Oh, I've wow. Been, wow. Yeah, I, I've, I've been astray for a really long time. Uh, I say a really long time. I mean, I really got, I really stopped. I really stopped caring about God and all things, you know, religion and anything like that. Probably when I was about 20, really 25. I remember 21, I really dug into the King James Version Bible and, and I, I read the whole New Testament. Right. And um, I was really into it. And I was more based off of the feeling aspect of it at 21. It was the feelings. I was chasing the feelings because I was misguided thinking that it, it was all about the good spiritual religious feelings. And I got that, but it quickly went away fast. And you realize that the feeling, it's not about the, God is not about the good feelings that you get from it, although it does bring good feelings. And that fell by the wayside. And then I went astray and, and started living as a, um, as, as living for myself for a few years, but I was spared a lot of damage, but now I've come back to it. And it's been the best thing. It's been mm -hmm. the best. It's you sometimes know. you got to back up and you get a better vantage point when you come back. It's kind of like what I was saying. Oh, about, yeah. You know, when they when they see oh. it. Yeah. Different. I mean, it's interesting you say that because you're coming from a very strong background, disciplined, uh, very, lively, very, very you know, strict. Yeah, and, very and strict even, religious and, even, and even then you had doubts. So oh, yeah. imagine, imagine a regular guy growing up with all the video games and movies and music and the crazy whatever and all that. How are they going to interpret the Bible if they haven't lived the way you have? And even in your case, you didn't see it as uh, you didn't see it as a truth until later on, or, or you know. I don't. I don't. I think most most young men are natural rebels, naturally. And I was uh, definitely a rebel against the church, and I broke all the rules. You know, I did all the things I, I wanted to do because I wanted to be cool in my own eyes, you know. 
but you realize that the real the real powerful men the real rebels in a in a good sense are the godly men i mean i i can definitely dig all those things knowing what i know now going full circle like you i had the, the rebellious years and went back full circle um but it hits me hard when someone like you know i don't know if you remember back in the day what you know with the 9-11 bush thing it's like you know god told me he said he literally said on camera god told me to go invade iraq <clears throat> and i'm thinking well if god talked to you well, i could say god talked to me and told me not to do that Mm -hmm. So what gives you the right, the divine right to do that? If, uh -huh. Did you say George Bush? Yeah, with, with the Iraq and all that stuff. With the yeah, I don't. Said God came down stuff. and somehow spoke to him and said, "Yes, you need to do this war." I don't believe I none of that. What stuff. if God came down and spoke to me and said not to do? You know, yeah. yeah, this is where yeah, we think you Remember, mind. Hitler was a Catholic. You know, I mean, a lot of people use that that G word to yeah. influence people. And and he even said a lot of people don't realize this. Hitler said it would have worked better had the Germans been Muslims because it would have been more of a mental control. And nothing against, you know, my Muslim brethren or my Christian brethren, Judean brethren. I mean, I look at all of these. It's it's the brothers of mankind. It's I mean the tribes exactly, of man. Exactly. And the main the main issue I have with all of this is that we are the ones living at this moment. But we have to speak about these gods that have or people that were considered gods living thousands of years ago and somehow conform to their reality of what we should think reality is when we are the ones walking this earth right now so yeah. we can speak uh, we can say we are living right now we can speak more in jesus we can speak more than krishna or mitra or buddha or any of these guys we're living right now they those guys had their time why is it we don't have a voice why is we're it we can't right. come up with our ideas you know how is it we're going to be stuck behind these specific doctrines oh. when we ourselves are supposedly more advanced now through time, but yet we're more suppressed with knowledge, and knowledge is given to us. It's not us creating the knowledge. That's how, that's how it should be because we're experiencing life. We're creating new things all the time, but yet they want you to give you a prepackaged, you know, say, mm -hmm. here, you have to follow this thing. You know, we know you know all these things, but, you know, we want you to follow this boring sense of a plan, census of a plan that we've had for everyone else. And ignore all these fascinating things that you have discovered throughout your life. That is the biggest, that right there, the fact that happens right there, that's how I know this is not real. You know, it's it's total deception. Yeah. The fact that's even yeah. happening, I know it's total deception. The fact you, you all these different the, religions. Some of the Catholic Church or just? Everything, the whole thing. That's why you have to look at the whole entire, mm -hmm. all yeah. of it, and see what the common de denominators are. And then you might find some form of the truth and okay all these guys all these religions believe in this one thing okay we see this here and you have to get deeper into it if you're only studying that one particular subject or whatever it is yeah you're, gonna, you're, you're never going to find the truth you got you, unfortunately you have to see the whole thing if someone's lying to you you got to see the whole crime case you got to see every little detail because that one little thing could lead to the truth so one would say we're, they're sticking us in you know den denominations just like anything else you know you have yeah you have a, you have a, you know, I mean, Christian. That, that's the only thing that brings us together too is is religions. Religions all tend to go for peace, but I think the world has divided us in religions. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Tony, how can you say that? Hey, MD, let me tell you real quick, real quick. Tony, how can you say that when supposedly we're a religious country, Christian? Mm -hmm. What's the first law? Thou shalt not kill. But yet we're over there in Iraq and everywhere, blown away people. It's like when you contradict what you claim in the, in the American Constitution, as, as it stands till to, to this day, has been ravaged. No, is, is, is it the first law? Love thy neighbor as, as you love yourself. Isn't that the first law? No, I think oh, the first oh, commandment is oh, the first God, commandment. Not worship any other God before me. So that should make us really think, right? When you look at these things, why would God be afraid of that? You know, like worship and and to say that any other God before me is saying that, well, other other ones exist that are no, I'm God. saying the, the people but, that are supposedly in power are saying Oh, yeah. No, no. They, they they totally. See, this is the thing, like how Primal Man said he read the New Testament. Right. It would open the door to say, well, OK, why is, did the New Testament be written? It was a, a smaller version of the Old Testament. The Old Testament is some brutal but very necessary stuff to read because it gives us a broader view of the whole picture. The, yeah. uh, the Greek Orthodox Bible with the Book of Enoch 
very important because a person who reads the Gideons, the King James Version, or the NIV Bible, which are very similar with the Genesis story, different from the New American Christian Bible, because it gets, and God created man in his image. King James, I think, says, let us create him in our image. Very much closer to the Torah of a plural faction, right? But if you go to the Apocrypha, you start to say, well, what about Enoch being brought to heaven and being turned into the angel called Matatron to judge the 200 fallen angels? Why was this taken out of certain Christian Bibles, but it still exists in the Greek Orthodox Bible and some Christian sections? But it's I, I'm not sure if it's in the Torah because it was only it's the like, five. But Andy, how, how would you interpret that being zombified through the movies and music and everything else? How can you interpret such type of knowledge that is so deep that even Problem Man's telling you, even though I grew up in those circumstances, even I, you know, had my rebel years and I saw it all as just it's just nonsense. His rebellion was to save his mind. It's like when a kid leaves high school. I had to leave high school to save my mentality. Jane Elliott is an educator and she said that no kid drops out. You're forced out. And the problem is the kids that take to the uh, the program, because if, you know, 13 years of schooling from kindergarten to 12th grade, it's like, you know, it, it's torture. It, it's torture. And sometimes you have to get out of that mindset to save yourself. So Primal Man might have walked away from it to save his sanity. And then he came back to it. So these things are necessary to get a broader look at the at the big picture, which is life. Now, each of us contain a piece of the puzzle. And when we put our pieces of the puzzle together, we get a bigger picture. If we can accept the pieces of the puzzle that everybody brings to the picture to say, hey, one, I don't know everything. Like Tony and I very much agree on this. It's like that's a that's a something that's very hard for people to say. We don't know. We don't know for sure. You know, um, that was the, for me to say, yeah, it, when I said that, I think it was on the last stream mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. you know, I understand and, in, in, you know, in, in I have faith. I have belief. Primal man has faith. He has belief. Michael Foster has faith and belief. But the reality is, is we really don't know. And that's mm -hmm. where your faith and your belief comes in. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for me to say, and I, I, it, I, I would imagine it would be hard for Michael Foster to say, when you have that strong faith, it's hard for you to say, I really don't know, but I'm still going to have that faith and belief. Yes. Well, here's how you do know. You know when your life changes. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. I don't want the same things I used to want. I don't do the same stuff. I don't hang out with the, I don't hang out with the same company I used to hang out with. And a lot of people will tell you that, but it, it really happened. Um, you but, lose but, you lose a taste for things you want. You lose a taste for foolishness. But can't can't other religions say the same thing? Is what I'm getting at. Some religions I are more than say. I, no, I, I definitely to... see the comparisons and the common variables in the other religions. I'm just saying the fact that you can even conceive of understanding what a god mind is or a god is does not conform to this particular, I would call it like, uh, like there's one band called Alien Ant Farm. Like we're on an ant farm, this is an experiment where we live in this world, we don't know where we came from. But the fact we can even conceive of a God or having those type of thoughts already separates us from the animals and you know they're, they're yeah. confined to their own. You know what's you know, funny is that if, if you look at animals, some of them are more human than humans. They don't, uh, some animals, aren't going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to take care of their young, you know, they're going to, you look at what, how some humans act and it really makes you wonder, it really makes you think. It's, hey, it's like one of those supercars where they took, they took off the ABS, they took off all the extra options. It's just bare minimum raw. Just one raw thing, power. You know what, you you know what so an animal has more sense than most humans is animals don't pollute their, their environment. Exactly. It's a and natural animals, it's yeah, a natural yeah. algorithm. We are not. Yes. The fact that we can contemplate well, the universe well, means well, this that again, it comes back to us being created somehow. It comes back to we are such a mystery to say, okay, all life seems to be created. But you're right. It it 
it's 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 almost like let's say what what were to happen if we allowed gods to roam the earth in these human bodies what would happen okay we have to have some safety mechanism okay let's tell them a fairy tale story of how this thing stuff works because if they do find out who they are this world's going to go cri- well there would be unification unification is what the would be the ultimate goal exactly. in the end. they don't want it for some reason that's we not the escape. goal for some mm-hmm. reason, the goal is to find out how you're special, how you're different, yeah. and how you're going to make a change. Cool. So I think this this particular cool. experiment is this. It's not yeah. unification. Yeah. If we see the Godhead in us or the little piece of God that being created by something that was higher, then we start to see the peacefulness. We start to see this similarity, the oneness, the unity. And you're absolutely right, because that's what whatever it is that might be on the other side, whether it be evil or bad or whatever, the yang from the yin. But you um, see, that that doesn't exist in the animal kingdom. In their mind, China doesn't exist. Russia going against the U.S. or whatever, these wars don't exist. They just know they're being affected. And that's all it is. The fact that we can even comprehend this complexity of intelligence scares me. Because it it also means we can... It's it's the term religion that people can't see past, and I don't I don't know how to tell them to see past it, and that, I don't feel like I, I don't know how to tell them how to see past the idea of religion to God, right? But pr- uh, primal man, the only way to see past it is you, through your own experience. Three, that's it. That's it. That's, that's all you got. There ain't that's nothing else. Well, that's all you got. Well, 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 I'm gonna say this, man, because. Uh, what primal man said where he stepped away from it one thing we don't look at is we have far more experience even for example primal man was a religious man for let's say 21 years as you said and he stepped away from it for four years you still have more experience in the faith than outside of the faith one of our problems we have is as soon as we're current we ignore the experience and the time we've had following something. And another thing Scribe brought up that's big, and I've been trying to talk to people about this, and this is what this panel shows is that, you know, Tony wasn't, you know, uh, MD wasn't. We were not part of the 1950s, man. You know what I'm saying? We were not the ones killing, sicking dogs on people. One of the things Scribe is trying to say is we're so forced to live by the past that we're not allowed to exist in the present. This conversation right here is the example of living in the present. You know what I'm saying? We're not victims or we're not, you know, putting our identity based on the past, man. We're basing our whole conversation on what's presently happening, man. And these are the type of panels where you can see, man, it's not about race. It's not about religion. It's not about none of this BS that's been used for over 50, 100 years to keep us separated from each other and keep us from learning and just looking at each other as what they fear. They would fear, you know, they would fear Scribe looking at me and I'm looking at Scribe, I'm looking at MD, and we just see humans. We just see we're just all humans from different walks of the earth. And if that was to happen, We'd become global minded where we don't fear going to another country. We don't fear another culture. We seek to embrace it. And once we seek to embrace something, they can't capitalize on division, man. And that's that's really what they're terrified of. Man. Yep. I've got somebody backstage, Paul St. John. He says, I want to call out this truth guy. It's all about race. Um I'm not. I'm not going to bring you on, man. I. I. I got to be honest. I don't like your attitude right off the beginning. I'm. I'm. I'm just not going to bring you on. And uh, I appreciate you trying to get on, but that just doesn't sit right with me. What you said. You said you what you weren't causing trouble. I get that, but I mean, so, sometimes Tony, we get we get to learn more. I mean, if he truly is a scumbag, we'll know instantly. But if he tries to, he might learn something. You know, sometimes when. Even MD will tell him, hey, man, sometimes you shouldn't kick these guys off so early because I want to hear. Yeah, I haven't okay. kicked him yet. He's still backstage. I'll bring him on real quick. And, yeah, uh, bring him on. I think yeah, we'll, know, we'll, know if he's, yeah, we'll know if he's bullshitting. Right. Paul, we're going to bring you on. Paul? What up? Hey, yep. Paul. I'm calling you out. What's it going to be, nigga? You got my- 
He's trying way too hard in the <laughs> accent. It's like, dude, the accent already. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. That, that's uh, Tony uh, is wise. Uh, be, you see, this is how you know. Because, <laughs> this is how you Tony's know. Are, someone, that that's all they can resort to to troll. You see the race thing and all uh, that. This shows uh, you right here. Yeah. These guys spend their days just looking for that. It's so sad. I can Not see the, funny, the fear can, that when somebody can, can't use their own voice. You know. Yeah, I can see the comment in the private chat, and then you know, kind of a backpedal. So. Um, you know, whatever, you know, just to, man, just to those end. are people, man. I oh, mean, those are people that already lost, man. You can't save people that choose to be lost, man. That you gotta just let them keep walking until they fall off that cliff. And you just, you just look down to see how long before they hit the ground. That is reality, man. So people like that, you know what I mean? Every once in a while, you get an example of people that are, you know, shamefully to say, man, it's a waste of oxygen, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. just, to, just the comments in the private chat, you know, I want to call somebody out. And, and for me, that's like, all right, you want to kind of start trouble. You know, if you if you say something a little bit different in the chat, but. You know, he he got his four seconds of fame. You know, so but uh, I'll remember who he is for sure. So, well, that's actually a good thing. It's showing that you know it, they're listening. You know, I mean, the amount of trolls that I had to go through, guys were coming on flashing all type of stuff, and yeah. you know, you're handling it perfect, man. I mean, this is you know, flashing, bro. I mean, no, this, this, baby. look at some of the old streams. This conversation, six, yeah. seven flashings on one stream alone. <laughs> guys coming on, just the thing is, this, this, stream is so, this this stream is so real that they couldn't even conceptualize a lie to even come on. <laughs> as, right. you know, it's, like, it's like we're protected in this energetic bubble that anyone tries to come with some bullshit, it's instant. It's we already know. I mean, it's it's oh. it's funny. It's like you already see where the knowledge is at. And whenever someone tries to come in with that, you know, it's just ignorance. It's just immediately discarded. And that was good, Tony. The fact you let him on to see if like anyone else comes on, they're just going to embarrass themselves because we're, we're, you know. Yeah, he had, no, he had nothing intelligent to say, so that was obvious. I mean, he gave it his best shot, but whatever, so. Uh, what were uh, we saying before that? I'm trying to re recollect. Uh, uh thank you. Uh, thing is just you know where where you stand but another thing i think another thing like scribe was saying is people weaponize they tend to weaponize religion like george bush when he said god told me here's the thing you can't actually you know refute what he's saying because if it's that of his faith they they utilize god or a higher being and to me the ultimate disrespect is to actually use a God's name in vain, in vain. for your for, yeah for your greed and 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 stuff that a God what why would a God be bothered about territory? This is why I say they don't really teach you about God in a church because if a, if they really taught you about God, they would say if God is everywhere. Then what does God need? What does God need to invade this country, that country? What does he need to kill, steal, whatever? When he's already everywhere, you know what I'm saying? It, it's it's extreme hip, hypocrisy to weaponize a god. I mean, and, I mean know, the fact the fact hold the truth the fact you gotta have validation from any god, I don't care who it is. The mm. fact you need validation whether or not this is real or not versus what what you feel. You know the the truth the what you feel is like <laughs> now that I see it kind of later in life, it's almost. You have to like you have murders and pedophiles and all these crazy people. In their eyes, that is like, you know, somehow not a bad thing. But in our eyes, obviously, it's like the worst thing you can do. It's like if you're, why would God, quote unquote, put people like murderers and rapists and pedos? Why would those people exist? It seems like it's a way to rig the game in a certain way where <laughs> it's like. Okay, we're gonna put lions and tigers and dragons in this particular reality, and you guys just have to. And then it, it's it's when you look at it from that standpoint, you kind of realize well these things somehow, and then and then, and then you have the gay people or. The I just think I just think people have corrupted themselves. 
but the thing is the gay thing i'm trying to, i mean the gay thing definitely from what i've researched that's something you're kind of born with and like md that's kind of like a safety mechanism for population control so if you had five sons they wouldn't run around screwing everything in sight you'd have to have some safety mechanism variable in there so you know i don't know if you want to speak about that but no um, no only one part so if you have a lot of sons then yeah or one or more are going to be that way but then the other ways is chemicalization. So people that go through sex changes have to take chemicals that will actually change, grow breasts, uh, receive the gonads. This is also being put into the water. So this oh, is why sure. frogs are changing sex, why male birds are finding being found with egg sacs. So people are being chemicalized into it. And then also the third way is conditioning. When you have a boy growing up and you know they're they're pushing barbie dolls on him and stuff like that and the culture is pushing it on him he's going to be he it's very easy to sway somebody in that direction you know so yes there's going to be a small percentage that are born that way but the the i spoke with somebody today this girl was telling me that her friend is a lesbian and she said that even that girl was saying that it has reached unprecedented heights of the the gender issue because it wasn't like that 30 years ago, you know, because it's an older lady. And um, I was like, yeah, I said, without a doubt, they're pushing this agenda. If it's a form of population control on a large scale, and it's also a form of, of just uh, it's it's turning i mean when you look at it all humans i mean something is really behind the scenes something yeah. behind the scenes. chaos uh -huh. well you gotta look at this profitable mental illness you know there's a difference between trying to make money with some guy walking around screaming versus a guy that wants to you know has body dysmorphia that wants to change his body but still follows the laws you know it we're human beings. One thing we've done we don't look at is how multidimensional, like we're the only animal on this earth that can literally seek to obtain resources on any aspect of another human. You know what I mean? If you have a, that, that, that promotion of body dysmorphia, you know, this whole homophobic agenda, it's all about them trying to profit. And, and, and let's ask one big question you know, to the panel here is that it would be far more less expensive and less dangerous if you already have a majority of the prisoners coming in, they're already gay. So wait, it's wait, wait, a lot of you, you said you referred to us as animals. Do you believe that we're animals? No, no, no. We we passed that mentally, you know, passed that gauge of being an animal. I'm animal saying we have is, animal we have animal flesh where the DNA can prove we're ninety whatever percent comparable to a rat or whatever it is, dog, whatever pig. Okay, there's that mm, data. But mm, how does that translate to the soul and the mind? There is wow. there's obviously a massive gap between animal and what we are, right? And well, that's what I, I that's what I always try to press upon because people don't want evolution, oh we came from chimps or whatever. It's like okay, let's say that happened. First of all, why are they still here? And second of all, why is it our our conscious minds have evolved to the point of godliness, but yet all the other animals are still in their kingdom and they're, they're limited to what they can do. They're not building rockets. They're not building cars. They're not doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing can potentially destroy the planet, whatever it is. We're get, we, why is it we've been given this power? And then why is it we've been suppressed? It's almost like we've, we're given this power and then someone's like, oh, wait, wait, you can't give them that much power. We've got to suppress all this stuff, keep them down and make sure they don't come out, you know, and, you know, and really find out where they came from and all this other stuff. Something mm -hmm. happened for that to even happen, to think about that, that they had to suppress us so much where they got to put poison fluoride in the water. They got to put it in, you know, in, in these things called these light prison camps called school and in college and then you know, sway our opinion on politics and we're supposed to blow these people up because of whatever reason, because God came down and told this guy that he's supposed to do it and all that. Why? And when you look at that, what is it? It's almost like it's, they're trying so hard to separate the two. There's something really crazy going on. And it's really obvious at this point, whereas it wasn't obvious in the 50s and 60s, but now it's so obvious with 9-11 and now this thing with the pandemic, it's, it's like they've, they've had to 
literally uh, they had to literally be at a lower position to be this desperate to show themselves because now they're Whoa. showing themselves. Now the fact they're doing a the global thing and 9/11, now they are showing their ass right now. And is it up to us to do something about that, or are we just going to sit here and say, "Oh, this is a conspiracy"? That's what the majority mm-hmm. of you are going to say. Oh, it's just a conspiracy, whatever. No, mm-hmm. it's happening in front of your face. Are you going to let it happen or not? Or you, you know, are you going to think God's going to do something about it? No, He has not. He has done nothing. Whatever God well, you prescribe to has done nothing. What do you but mean God, by that? I don't you believe are, that. But you are the God to do something about it. What's God going to no, do right no, now? No, 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 no. What's no, God no, going to do right no. now, problem man, to stop this? What's he going to do right now? What can you do versus him? Mm. Well, well, I think you can actually do something because you're here. We're, 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 having these, we're having these conversations. I pray for this country. I pray for America. That's all I can do. Yeah, but 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 what he's saying is what he's saying is that God isn't intervening to change things. Yeah, right? but that's not the way not the way we think it should be done, though. But that's the dis- the disconnect is is yeah. that God's not God's not saying we're not He's not going to let all these bad things happen. But what I believe is through us, that's how the change is made. Yes. I, that's the way the Bible is is written. That's the way mm-hmm. I think most religions are. Is it's through us is the change. In other words, God's not going to come down and throw a throw a fiery lightning bolt. You know, at a at a child molester, that's not going to happen. We know that's not going to happen. So yeah. it's 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 God through us. Mm-hmm. You know, God over man, man over woman, woman over child. That's the way it works. That's what I believe. Yeah, and when and when, when you say God, Tony, I believe you're just saying the, co- the godly consciousness mm-hmm. that controls our bodies to to do these things here, because we are here right now. God is up there, supposedly doing whatever He's doing. But we are here that affects the timeline, affects what's going on on this planet. That's the only realism I see. How am I going to put up? Let's say tomorrow I switch to Muslim or I switch to Buddha or I switch to some other God because I think it's cooler or whatever. Just because I switched over doesn't mean that reality all of a sudden is now real. Mm-hmm. It's like once I understood to see all of them and see the, the similar things about them, they're all talking about the same thing. And it's just in a different language and a different way of being, a different culture and a different, you know, you know, linguistics really. So numbers can't lie. You know, numbers cannot lie. Linguistics can. But then when you look at the words, you compare them to different languages, then you kind of get down to the real meaning of that word. And would you, you would, would you agree that right now we're in a spiritual we're, we're in spiritual. Pro, we have spiritual problems right now. <laughs> spiritual warfare, as a lot of people would say. Would you agree with that? Uh-huh. Definitely hardcore. I mean, so hardcore to where it could either be one of two things. Uh, either we're being tested to go through this as, you know, a mass consciousness to see how we handle this thing. Because in the end, I think it's just for data, metadata, you know, just like Google when they analyze who's going where, what they're doing. I think all this stuff is simply to track and trace our footprint in this lifetime. That's really all it comes down to. And whether or not you leave a legacy, that's up to you. And but that's up to, for debate and subjectiveness. Even though, even if you're famous, you know the people can think otherwise or whatever it is. But well, you know, you're leaving a trace of yourself regardless. Do you, you know. do you think? Um, I'll just ask you directly. Do you think that this, all of this chaos and evil doing and wickedness, is gonna go unpunished? Well, that's what I was saying earlier. That the ones that are doing this. From the years and years I've been researching this thing, some there's one guy, I forgot his name, he was saying that the way they're doing this, the way they're getting away with it is they're pretending to do good things on one side, but then the, by telling us what's going to happen, by basically literally letting yeah. you know. It's, and, called, it's called deception. That's, yeah, the pre- biggest, that's the biggest tool. It's the it's biggest tool of evil, deception. Yeah, it's predictive programming. So they'll, they'll try to do good, supposedly what they think good is, stimulus check, whatever it is. But then on the opposite side, they're doing the real deed that's going to dig us deeper and deeper and deeper. So they still get a lashing of karma, but not as bad if they were just pure evil. If they are just pure evil, they'd be run out of there real quick. But they, they figured out a way to split it down the middle kind of and do good enough where it's like maybe 48 49%, but 51 52% is evil. So they're still going to suffer that two, three percent of karma, 
but they're going to keep that timeline going. So that's how they've been able to escape the karma time. Like, I know karma's real. I've lived it. I've done stuff, and then stuff happened. I was like, yep, I can see it right there. And it made me learn those lessons. That was karma. I know it. And other things my yeah. friends did, and all of a sudden, they, you know, all of a sudden I see they're, they're doing the karma thing, and whether they're going to jail or whether they got to get, you know, whatever else happens, that is real. That I is think, real. I mean, I do think that we're going to see the reckoning and the punishment of evildoers in our lifetime soon. Well, well, well I'm going to say this, Primal Man, uh, and this is where, you know, to do two things is we discount that the, the evil and deception was born as soon as, you know, the religious started selling that heaven rather than us seeking to make the world we're in a paradise. It, we, they kept selling, you know what? Don't worry about what's going on here. Don't worry about the king, you know, you know, overtaxing you, you know, you being poor, impoverished, starving. There's a heaven outside. I mean, the Catholics used to literally charge people to buy a ticket into heaven. You know what I'm saying? We're the only, ex, you know, organisms on this planet that say, you know what? I know I could breathe here. I know there's food to sustain me, but nah, there's a better place. You know what I'm saying? That's right. given us the excuse to destroy the planet. And and you gotta understand the, the the religious issues we have now are far more tame than what they had in the 1500s, where you know, just if scribe said, you know what, you know, what I mean, uh, I woke up today, I don't feel as blessed. Oh, bl blasphemous! He'd be killed. You, you know, we. We the problem, the problem with us is, man, we've made this time period seem like it's the harshest it's ever been. No, it's it was right. worse when you couldn't drink clean water if you weren't, you know, blessed by the king or queen, whatever. You, you know, this is nothing, you know. And then the other thing to go back to what Scribe said is that think about it. You know, in the nineteen twenties or thirties. They were drawn comic books of spaceships, technology we've never seen before until now. We just we just currently have certain technology they've been talking about over 50 years ago. They've limited us with this gender politics. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, if Scribe they're dis they're distracted, uh, we're distracted. Oh yeah. Well, well what's not? I want to say. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I actually, hold on. I want to say something real quick. During the pandemic, right now. What are they pulling right now? That's the perfect time. What have they been doing since the last two years? They've been talking about, oh, we have this uh, naval officer, uh, Air Force officer. Or, yeah, Air Force. Actually, it was Commander. I forgot his name. Commander Frazier, I think. Yeah, Commander Frazier. So he had our footage of these discs or whatever that they observed, and then they recorded and all that. So now it's being seen. All of a sudden now, it's truth. Now all of a sudden, the, the military, because that was a video that from back in 2016, now, all of a sudden, they're bringing it out. Mm -hmm. So it means there's acknowledgement saying, okay, now these videos, since they're acknowledged by an, an Air Force commander, Frazier, that these actually took place, and they have hours of footage of it. And then you got the Pope over there saying the Alien Brothers and all that, and that happened back several years ago where the Pope said our Alien Brothers or something like that. So while this pandemic thing is happening, this is when they come out with this shit about, oh, now aliens are real while we're in the pandemic so they get you while you're in you know when you're freaking out and they're saying by the way aliens are real that's cool that's cool but i'm still worried about wearing a mask and all this other stuff <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like they slip it in right there when you're most vulnerable and... i mean but you fellas know the tactics i think the men on this panel know the tactics of evil doers evil men we well, know the tactics. problem man, the thing is the evil doers you're talking about that is subjective how so but, what maybe what I think is evil is not evil to you and Bryce. No, and Bryce I think Bryce. we're pretty. I think we're pretty agreed on who's evil. I think we. I think we kind of agree on on the evil doers and what is evil and what is wickedness. No, I think we agree. One thing, on one thing my my dad told me. He's very religious. He said the priest one time said about a story about the you know you already know about the uh, about the caterpillar turning the butterfly, and when it's in the cocoon, it's trying to break itself out. He said he tried to help it break the cocoon to come out and he found out it died and he found out later that no, it has to struggle. It has to go through that struggle to become a butterfly. 
so there has to be some sort of like what uh, Andy's saying that the uh, the roots your roots need to go down the hell a certain way to actually reach heaven because if you do not uh, experience yeah. those things you will not understand what truth is yeah experience true pain and then yeah. you can say okay these things but then it's still subjective even after that because one guy's saying oh the evil the U the US is evil because they killed my mother my sister my father because they dropped the bomb on our village in Iraq how can you tell me the US is not evil you see you got to look at it from all sides until because, you can see because did, did you support that Obviously, I'm American. Obviously, I'm thinking but you, you know, didn't support it. You're a sovereign man. I'm not. No, we're none of us are sovereign. The only one sovereign I know is the Queen of England. She's the only one that owns her own land and pay property tax or, you know, has needs a driver's license or nothing. She's free, from what I know, as far as a person living breathing on this planet Earth. But we, our sovereignty was gone in the mid 1800s. Since you've been able to get in front of a sheriff and you can have a stand up in front of another guy and he can't do nothing. The sheriff is just standing there watching these two guys draw against each other and that's it. You had sovereignty of your life and say this man caused me harm therefore i want to do something and the law cannot get involved because i'm a man that's sovereignty whereas now you are simply a piece of paper that yeah, but freedom Richard. freedom doesn't no, no, mean the talking right. about freedom like doesn't uh, mean. now i know what you're saying primal man he's he's spiritually sovereign and he is it's okay has spiritually yeah. they cannot touch us we are that cannot yeah. be touched, but I'm saying this particular avatar. Right. Yeah, people. no, you have a very deep sp spirituality that goes, it goes beyond religion. Scribe has a, you know, he, he gets really deep, man. I, I think that's why we connect so deep on a level because we see things very, I, very. Medical. I just think, I just think scribe um, at a certain point there, there needs to be some objectivity and I'm trying to, uh, trying to, trying to reach it there with him myself. Like I'm learning too. But uh, with the whole like bombing, America bombed my village, so so America's evil, so that makes it subjective. And I'm, no, no, I'm no, just... it's not. It's not definitely not America's evil. It's see, and this is the the group think that they want us to fall into. It is it's like a black and white thinking. It's saying okay, there were certain people that had a hidden agenda. You know, especially we see them saying, well, "Oh yeah, well." God, I mean, the reason I say that not all it, of us. It, it's definitely yeah. not all of us. But there yeah. was a story of an American soldier that uh you know a lot of soldiers came back my nephew did three tours in iraq um it it uh one guy said they were shooting into apartment buildings they decimated there, there was no standing buildings left in iraq when they got done with it in baghdad there, there was that was it there, there was no buildings uh people were taking uh radioactive barrels to hold their water American troops had to go through with Geiger meters, testing the barrels and giving them replacements because they wouldn't give up the radioactive barrel. So when you look at that, you're saying, well, OK, this is the goodness of it. OK, people might say, well, they destroyed the village or whatever. But I mean, they're going in. They could have let people just sit there and drink out of the radioactive barrels <laughs> without a doubt. Depleted, well, 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 depleted uranium was used. But there was one instance where a guy said he bashed in. Uh, the soldiers, they killed everybody in the woman's family, the father, the children. The woman was, the mother was the only one that survived. And he goes, he backed up against the door and lost it and just started, tears started coming down his eyes. He goes, now this woman who everybody just murdered her entire family, her children, her husband, came up, put her hand on his face and said that it is Allah's will. That changed that American soldier so fucking profoundly that he came back to the United States doing lectures, saying how criminal it was. Now, this is not to say that everybody who's American, I mean, I'm a natural born American, we're not criminal for that, right? You see, there is there is a faction. Now, yes, there's people that go along with it, my country, right or wrong and all of that. These guys are zombies, man. Those are the zombies. Well, so you're, talking, the you're, talking about, you're talking about the military? Yeah, well, not, not the whole military. When I was in the military, I remember there were instances where I was like, look, I'm carrying heavy artillery. It's like, I don't got a problem with killing people, especially if they're, if whoever it is, you see? So I don't want to say it openly, but there was a lot of internal conflict in there. Don't you think, don't you think most wars between, you know, boots on the ground, those men are just trying to kill the other guy so he don't get killed. 
Well, exactly. that's one part the, of it. No, that, that's one part of it. The, but the, the soldier kills not really as much to kill the other person. He kills to be part of the group. So no. it's we're doing that so I can be accepted by the other guys. But, um, there are things that happen there where the military has a problem. With and who's people. and who gave them that idea, though? That's that's well, the well, one thing. On, let me they, give. They, hold they on, gotta, let me. Let me say something real quick because <laughs> I know you're going on, you're doing your thing. Look, let me well, say well, they got to get you when you let me give you Let me give you a real world example of happened to me. Look, I'm half American. My dad's from Ohio. My mom's from Panama. So basically his military thing let him down here instead of going to Vietnam. So he came here, met my mom, married her, whatever. Back and forth to the U.S. But basically we came back to the U.S. when I was young. And that's when the, the Panama War the Panama War happened. So... I'm thinking like an American, okay, this is cool, what's going on? But then later as I got older, I heard stories from other friends that are Panamanian about what was going, you know, other parts that were going on. And I could see how it was totally unfair and, you know, some family members got killed and, you know, businesses went down, all kind of stuff. Well, you were there during Panama with the Noriega. Yeah, I was yeah. living in it while I'm, 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 I'm both at one time. Yeah. I'm the guy who's invading and I'm the guy who's getting invaded at the same time. Because my mother's Panamanian, and my father's American, so he was part of that war. While my mother's Panamanian, but we're on a base, we're on a military air force base. But at the same time, I'm, I'm like, how are you supposed to? How are you supposed to understand that later on? Yeah, that you're you're, you're, bo you're both war. those things at one time, and you're ripped in between because now you learn more about it and what's evil. Which one, who was evil for doing it? Yeah. Both yeah. guys the, have the, the the peep the puppet masters. Those are the evil ones. Well, right. you know what? Another thing is too. Colin Powell had said um, there a lot of Panamanians innocent died on that. He sent in five thousand troops to kill whatever, however, but to get Noriega. And when they asked him about that, he goes, "Oh, I don't deal with casualty. I uh, casualties. I deal with results. I mean, some really really fucked up shit. And oh. this is where." This is the same, you know, it, it's it's really messed up because that's where you see the zombie thing and like how Scribe is saying, he's- I'm saying, what what, what what am I going to believe is real? Yeah. yeah. Who's no, evil? I'm mean, both of these things. Which one is real to me or not? I got to choose one, right? Mm. Who's wrong? Who's wrong? It's called in the middle. I'm my caught my between two worlds. Between my great grandpa, worlds, like my great grandpa, yeah. who was a World War II vet, he says, he always would say, and it was like we always would try to get little little bits of info, but he would always say, "All war is bad. All war is All bad." War. Yes. The, the most the casualties, right? Seven to ten percent of casualties of wars are soldiers. Ninety percent are civilians. Fifty percent women and children. A lot of people don't know this. The war, the American, the war that Americans had that killed the most Americans. You know what war that was? That was civil the civil war. war. Yeah. Civil so, war, they, I mean, when you look at people, fight, how do you have a war that's civil? To treat people with civility is to treat them respectfully, right? Mm. Even the name of the war, the civil war. Yeah. Are, civil war. You know, you think that's, about that. It's like they are putting such a mind fuck on us that right. it's like what Scribe was saying. If we were just to think for a second and just follow just – a few of the things that are in religion, thou shall not kill. If we just that alone, if that was followed, you imagine how the world would change. You yeah. know, love thy neighbor, you know, don't covet thy neighbor. You, you just look at just a few of them and you start to say, holy shit. And nobody can change that. Uh, the only way they can change it if you don't look at the higher power as that is an authority. And, so that's, that, and that's where I say that's where the objectivity comes in. And where yeah. it's not subjective at that point. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, you got to look at it as, man, it's, I, I tell people this, dude, you, I, I don't believe in good and evil because I, I've learned those two words are just catchy words to manipulate the, the sell pitch. It, it, we're, we're opportunistic, man. And the opportunity can lead to death or life. You know what I mean? And, and and that's really what it is. And what we are, we're animals on a certain aspect. You know, for example, the United States, if you break it down like an, on an animalistic level, it's a territory. It's a territory. We're still having territorial disputes 
like animals, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, Even no, though the human is something okay. rebooted it though, hold. Think about it. Okay, America, right? They say it's from America Vespucci, but it's proven to be wrong. England had um mm -hmm. maps. Columbus had the Piri Reese map that showed the whole coast of North America all the way down to Argentina. <clears throat> now, when you think about this, who mapped out America? The lie, Columbus discovered America, right? Leif von Erikson was here 800 years prior to that. So how the mm -hmm. freak did, you know, uh, prior to that, other people were here. You see, so uh, they try all the Native Americans came through the Bering Strait. Now archaeology has proven that wrong, proven that Polynesians had to have sailed across the Pacific, not even the Atlantic. Thor Heyerdahl proved that by sailing on a freaking raft, basically, made from tree trunks, showing that it can be done, right? Um, you look at all of the stuff with the spirituality with the Egyptians, right? There was a point in Egypt where everything was about developing the spirit for what? Not death, but the afterlife. Mm -hmm. So everything in this life, when you think about it, if it's based on our behavior and we know this, wouldn't we act different? We'd start to treat each other differently. We start to say, you know, some we're going somewhere. And when we go there, whether it be standing in front of somebody, the Egyptians were the ones. Well, it got to go before that as well. Where they said you go and you get judged, your heart gets weighed against some type of feather. And if it's heavier than that then you go to the, you know, the hyena alligator, you know, mixture animal that eats your, you know, soul or whatever. Oh, but if well. not, you go, you know, so you look at these things, you say, how the freak does a 5,000, 7,000 year old culture have stuff like this? But then it got infected with certain type of high priests that were saying you can buy Shekti dolls now. So when you buy a Shekti dolls, basically you can buy your way out of hell. You can, you know, and, and what does that sound like? Does that sound like a, I don't know, a communion wafer or something? I mean, I used to have to eat those things. You know, when I was younger, I remember going to different churches. And the problem is you start to see that no religion really, and not nothing against religion, can really teach you about your own spirituality. It's going to come in time. It can give you guiding points, just the way no government on earth can give you freedom. There's it's like, no it's government. Like, it's like when, when exactly when, when they say you're you're damned eternal, damn, eternally damned to hell. Okay, if that's no, for nothing real, can damn you forever. What, what, no. yeah, why, why am not? Why am I not there right now? This might be a version of that. What well, they well, call this, and you know, Voltaire I mean, said that. Voltaire says what he said. Planet Earth is the asylum to where the rest of the universe sends all their lunatics. Voltaire was so smart that one time, he, I think there was a story of he was in England mm. and they were going to beat the shit out of him. And he told the crowd, look, hey, man, isn't it bad enough that I wasn't born an Englishman? And when they heard that, they, they carried him to where he was going safely. So when you think about this, it's... It's it's like a, a game of the mind. I saw something where a guy produced a video. He said, what if this reality, everybody else is not real. It's just the person that's experiencing it. And it's a lesson that we have to learn. So all of you guys are my dream. Uh, yep. Primal man's dream is everybody. You're, you see what I'm saying? So it's here to teach us what we need to know. Like saying, hmm, you know what? You need to learn this because it's like Carl Jung said, everything that bothers you about somebody else can give you a better insight into yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really deep stuff that, again, should be contemplated, thought about and, you know, reflected upon that. That's where the real knowledge comes in. The, Socrates with the observation is the truest form of learning. Reflection, not just experience, but the reflection upon that experience. I mean, the way you I know? see it is like, yeah. it's like gods, gods that have been shot down. Any great men that have stood up and created a whole, like Socrates, Tesla, all these, Jesus Christ himself, all these guys that supposedly went to the next level, they get crucified, they get they get killed, they get put in jail. Yeah, Socrates was forced like, to, to drink the poison it? sumac, right? His students broke him out. They broke why him out. It? And he goes, no, why I got to stay here and do this. Why is it when truth yeah. comes out, they get damned to hell, they get 
just put you know mm-hmm. witches and all that they get thrown in the, in the water to see if they float why is it when anything comes out that's different from the reality and that unifies us that guy well, ends up in jail or ends up getting shot jfk whatever well, it is I, I think it's because whatever it is that's trying to teach us the lesson it has to be hard it's like going through a vis- video game with no opposition it it's like lifting a weight a 10 pound weight it's not going to build your muscle to the point you're going to have to lift 20 pounds 30 pounds 40 pounds and then you're going to see results on that muscle right so maybe some of us need a harder puzzle a heavier weight because when we look at it we say man this guy had it real easy but this guy didn't he had it real hard i like that yeah i call that your cross it's your cross. Yeah, the cross you bear. Everybody's yeah. got a different weighted cross you bear. There's an old saying, God's not going to give you something to bear that you can't bear. But then right. you think about it, you know, you start to say, really, it brings you back to what is it? That it's, it, it, you think of us. It's like, what the fuck am I? What, what am I? What, I, I? I look at the world. I can manipulate the world. I can do so many different things, right? What is this exist? Where am I going to go when I lay down? And I have these dreams. I don't know what it is, these premonitions. And I come out and I say, whoa, what culture talks about that? The Aborigines. They say we 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 come out of the dream world into this world. And when we pass, we go back to the dream world. So this is actually the vacation. And what is what is the old English song? Row, row, row your boat merrily down the stream because life is just a dream i mean even when you look at the crazy shit that we got in our cultures that song ring around the posies of rosie's pocket full of posies that's about nuclear war ashes ashes we all fall down i mean there's some and and oppenheimer even said when he detonated the nuke they go is this the first nuclear uh atomic bomb ever uh detonated he goes in modern times so in other words, they got the technology from ancient cultures. He used to read the Vedas in Sanskrit, and he wrote a quote from the Bhagavad Gita on the atomic bomb that says that Shiva says in there saying, I am the destroyer of worlds before they dropped it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, vaporizing like 70,000 people. There's, I think it's still in one of the museums in Japan where there's a little girl, I think, reaching up for a butterfly and that flashed into cement. And there's also a mother holding a child and that flat because when people get vaporized, their shadows and their, their the dust of their body will get flashed onto rock and stuff like that. When you think of the, the shit that they've created to kill people, it's just on another level. Now, I don't even know what to, I mean, just look at what's going on. You don't, it's like Algulus Huxley said, you you can't build a concentration camp where people want to escape. That's inferior. You got to get these people to worship their concentration camp. They must, they, they must fight to be in the concentration camp. And then it'll go into painless pharmaceutical concentration camps. Look at what people are doing. There's been an opioid epidemic for 20 years, right? What has been going on for 20 years too? Nobody ever left Iraq or Kuwait or Afghanistan in the past 20 years. There's a kid that was born a year or two ago, right? He, he, no, he, he, he was in, sent, uh, sent to Afghanistan, right? He was born when the war started. 18 years later, he's in Afghanistan in that war. Isn't that some crazy shit? So you're oh, seeing it. Yeah. And you start to say, holy shit, when this war started, this kid was born, and now he's over there. See, these are the things that if people start to talk about it, where they'll forget about I mean, all of this. I mean, that, that's why I'm saying that there's like an arc, like, uh, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, and then 9-11, and then now. It's well, like, 9/11. wow. It's Think like- about 9-11. How much of a of a joke is it plain that that is 911 everybody knows 911 was uh is is the police number right you know who else was overthrew a government on on 911 was the pinochet of chile and there's another one too matter of fact people are kids are so stupid today that there was a chick that said hey uh do, is the police's number 911 because of 911 
This is how just uh, you think uh, about it. You start to say, I, mean, I, I can't believe this shit. But I'm saying this is how bad the shit is for, for yes. kids. I don't think intelligence, I don't call them stupid or anything. I'm just saying these poor kids are being put into this system that is so mm -hmm. beyond natural reality that I'm scared to even have a kid. You see, yeah. this is what I'm saying. This shit is so ridiculous oh. that, wow, if I do have a son or a daughter, god damn, how the hell... You, you'd have to, build a, you'd that, have to build a school. That's the biggest fear, man. I mean, yeah. it's like if I understand that, but people, but yet people are having just kids for the hell of it. They're totally in zombie land, you know, brainwash land. I, <laughs> it's like, yeah. why do I care so much? Why do I give a shit? You know, go ahead, go ahead, hold truth. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing we're facing now, man, we, we got two things going on. You got the oppression going through where they like MD was saying with the weapons where they advance the way to kill us at such a rate, be it medical, be it with bombs and so on. Then what they've done, and why I say Hitler, if Hitler was alive today, he'd probably kiss the American flag, you know, because now what they've done is they've utilized suppression. Remember how they used to say, yo, you won't get advances with cars due to the oil companies. Now the suppression is through social dynamics you know what tony bruno built a spaceship but tony didn't get a, a trans person on that plane so we can't really count it. oh man tony got a trans person well he didn't get a midget that was trans that identified as a tall person they're now using uh social dynamics and gender politics to suppress our technological events in our mind they're literally using social dynamics to suppress our intelligence. If you look at the 20s and 30s of how intelligent these men were and how, how technology, I mean, how does a guy in the 1920s draw the shit they drew without any reference? But, hey, hold you know, on. They, hold they had reference. They had reference. The but, reference. But, but, comes, no, no, look at this. If you read the, Raman, uh, the Ramanyana and the Mahabharata, right? They talk about spaceships. They talk about Vimanas that worked on ver Mercury Vortex engines. This is why Hitler went into India and then started coming out with Bell UFO type technology. You can find this knowledge today. Ancient Aliens, the program, is based on a lot of that stuff. Okay, well, in MD, what if I tell you Hitler was a pawn? Just like, you know, the grandfather Bush funded money through not the, the Nazi banks and all that. This is all control it through, back yeah it's all, it's all it, controlled through an invisible network that we're not pretty just like the dark web mm -hmm. all you're seeing well, all you're seeing is the public internet you're not seeing what's underneath the belly of it so yeah, yeah. so when, when you talk about it, it sounds ridiculous but when you look into it it's real well, well, this well, is the problem the antikythera device the antikythera device was found off the coast of the island antikythera by the greek islands right it's over two thousand years old now they're saying that that's basically the equivalent of an ancient computer. So when you have something that 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 is that old, and you start to say, "Holy smokes, how is this?" I don't. I don't. There had to have been ancient civilization. The 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 um the, the this the is legend. probably why this is probably why we need religion to cover that up. Well, well you, you got to have some, re you, a religion. A perfect mess. The, the legend of Atlantis, right? Think about Atlantis, right? And then think about this space shuttle names, Discovery, right? Atlantis, right? And Challenger. And what happened to Challenger? It was destroyed. So it was a quest for the discovery of Atlantis and all Challengers will be destroyed. It, it was saying that in the space shuttle launches because you had space shuttle Discovery, space shuttle Atlantis, space shuttle Challenger gets destroyed. And I forgot the other name. There was a space shuttle before that. And you look at these things, it's like they've been searching and they know that there was ancient civilizations before this that were more technologically advanced than this. That's pretty hard for people to believe. But when you look at the pyramids that have outlasted buildings that were built 500 years ago in, in ancient Europe, you start to say, man, those pyramids really are lasting, you know? Things built out of stone. What else did it say in certain religions? It's, it's, it's what they choose. It's what they choose. No, no, Look, 
think about the look, religious. Look person. at Washington D.C. Look at Washington D.C. That is not your regular. Yeah, exactly. I grew, up, yeah. I grew up in Washington D.C., so I got to see the monuments. I got to see all that. Mm -hmm. That shit ain't built out the regular stuff. That shit. Yeah. That's an obelisk. You have yeah. an Egyptian obelisk. There's yeah. an obelisk here with hieroglyphs in Central Park. When I saw that shit from the museum, from the Met Museum, I said, you got to be kidding me. I was taking pictures of it from the fourth floor saying, what the hell is an obelisk doing in Central Park, Manhattan? There's an obelisk, an Egyptian obelisk, basically, in Washington, D.C. When I was there, I saw it myself, too. The whole layout of Washington, D.C. Why is, why is there towns called Babylon and Cyprus and the same names from these ancient cities? Right? And that Why obelisk, is there a pyramid that, that on the obelisk, back of a dollar bill? Why is obelisk, a pyramid on the back of a dollar bill? Why does that pyramid have 13 rows of bricks? Why is there 13 leaves in the eagle's uh, olive branch uh, claw? Right? What What are all of these references to these, you know, it, I don't know, if, I, I can't remember, is it 13 stripes on the American flag? I'm not sure, but I think it might be, right? So you, you, you gotta ask yourself, why do airlines omit the 13th row why does it go from 12 to 14. But, why did the thing you were talking about the obelisk thing it, that one new york you're talking about because i researched that a while back that came from france just like the statue of liberty yeah no no, no. It, it does come from france but it's made in the image of an egyptian but that's obelisk. through the masonic you know thing. yeah now now in central park there's an actual obelisk there you know in in um didn't they take it was called the eye of the needle or eye of Cleopatra. It was an obelisk from uh, Egypt that I think went over to Europe. I'm, I'm not sure if it was England or if it was France or whatever. There was also one from Ethiopia that went to Italy. So, you know, you, you wonder about this stuff and you say there's so much that is hidden in plain sight. How, what do you hide something that it's hardest to be found in plain sight, right? That movie Revolver said, where would the enemy hide? Your greatest enemy, where would it hide? It would hide in your own head. So the mm -hmm. ego of us all hides right there in our head. And if somebody goes to tell you that, hey, you got to get rid of that enemy in your head called the ego, you will destroy that person to defend the enemy in your head, which is the ego. Our battle every day shouldn't be against anybody except the person we were yesterday. You know, I have a, I have an issue, MD, with the ego. The thing is, if you know what you're worth, you don't show up. At the same time, your ego is there. So when you are fronted by someone else talking some shit or whatever they're doing on, on you, when do you use your superpower? When do you use that, that ego power? Well, you know, so the when, ego when power... It, think about this. Is it easier... Is it smarter to use the ego power or is it smarter to let somebody trip themselves up? If, if we can be smart enough to harness that and say, you know what, I'm not going to use my ego because it's sort of like using the ring, you know, the invisible ring from photo. Once you put that ring on, you're in the netherworld and the Nazgoth are coming for you, right? That's like the ego. It's like something that's very dangerous to use, but I understand what you're saying. There comes a point where you got to pull out the sword and just go straight Conan on a motherfucker. Something. It's like it's like Luke. He had to learn some of the dark side, but if he, if he did it too much, he would turn the dark, the dark side. Exactly. So yeah. He only used it when he really needed to use it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very, what... Very, very dangerous. Very dangerous, man. Well, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I think this is interesting. But what mm. I want to say is, though, what you're talking about, and I don't oh. know if you agree with me, MD, about this, oh, but man. when you when you're uh, talking when you're talking about like we're upset about the enemies, man. No, get Tom. Um, mm -hmm. wouldn't most people just explain it as coincidence. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the average person would. I, they do that because it 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 dismisses spirituality. Mm -hmm. If you say coincidence, then mm -hmm. you say metaphysicals don't exist, uh, mm -hmm. premonitions, uh, insights from a higher power. Because th there is no such thing as a coincidence. These things That's are happening for reasons. I mean, primal man, Gene, wouldn't you say that most people, the average person who's not spiritual Christian or in some some form of religion would just explain things as coincidences, not as something there's a higher power that or something or there's someone behind what's going on. 
There's always a there's always a puppet master. I agree with that. Yeah. In the world. Mm-hmm. Well, the uh, thing is, son, I think you're asking how you dif- differentiate something that happened naturally that happened to be coincidence where you caught the guy because you saw it happen again. Okay, now I know it's him because I saw him again in this video or whatever it is versus something happened supernaturally that's part of your path. How do you distinguish those two things? I think it's because there is no distinguishing. The fact that you saw the guy in the video the first time to catch him the second time, that proves that it what there's no coincidence. Yeah, but, but but then there's the other side, like like you were saying, if it came from a higher realm, it happened it, it, to let you know, don't do that because these things are happening. You know, what there if it's is us? Something... What if it's us in a higher realm warning ourselves? What it's if natural? You know, you know, it's, it's trusting your instinct because that's what's been taken away. Because well, what it, is in, it, it, Well, think about this. What is it? How do I know when to look at the camera to see the guy? You see, so when I look at these things, it really makes me wonder, is the future already laid out to where That's it can be changed free, little by little? Free will, free will no, versus... No, and, and there is destiny. free will. There is free will. That's what I'm saying. Free will versus destiny. Because on one part, it looks like, damn, that looked like it had to be done by free, by destiny. And the other, other side, it's like, damn, we got free will to do what we want. So it's like, which one is it? That's the matrix... Uh, it's like a never-ending perpetual equation that is not an equation. Where it's, it's like it has weird quirks. That's what that's what they call quantum physics, quantum entanglement. This I've been thinking a lot about this lately. Yeah. The free will, when it comes to mm-hmm. uh, salvation, mm-hmm. and um, there's there's a guy that I've been recently just getting into. First, there's a guy named Charles Spurgeon, MD might know of him, and there's another guy named A.W. Pink, who's A.W. Pink goes more into depth about it. But uh, essentially, they believe that uh, normie Christianity, or Gonzo calls normianity, believes that we can we can have a choice to determine whether, like, hey, I'm gonna I'm just gonna turn to God by my own will, my own works. Whereas these other guys that that uh, go against free will the- theism say that God's grace or God's salvation is a gift that can only be given to you by God. Now, however, I think a lot of people recently what I've started to sort of smoke on, as we say, is that servanthood or being a servant of God is is a choice. But mm-hmm. uh, salvation, I'm leaning towards, is truly only a gift and that we cannot receive salvation based off of our own desire, because no man truly will have a desire for forsaken his self forsaken his pleasures mm. think about that i mean michael bunker brought that to my attention one one day he's on one of my live streams he says uh he says no no primal man i'm gonna tell he says what's your favorite ice cream i said uh butter pecan he says okay i'm gonna snap my fingers and you're gonna like chocolate ice cream and he snaps his fingers he says did it work of course it didn't work so he's like how will you have free will to say okay now i'm gonna like chocolate ice cream from butter pecan so essentially Holy like i said shit. oh that's deep man that's yeah deep. I know there's a scientific experiment that, that proved he said they couldn't prove that we had free will he goes but they did prove that we have free won't so yeah. in other words you know it's really deep when you look at it you start to say wow so we have the ability to not do something so it's like the opposite of free will but it's still just as powerful I mean, and that, that goes back to exactly that goes back to the topic of the stream was when i was younger i didn't like clams i didn't like certain seafood but as i got older and understood it more like it was like you know when i was a kid i thought it was just like you know nasty whatever but when i got older i realized what it was and then actually started liking it because other people was like yeah you should you know t- you do it like this you know mix it with this sauce or whatever so it wasn't until i understood it more so it goes back to if the fear is true to you under, try to try to understand why you fear it and then it might be something that you realize it's just you know fake fear they shouldn't have had like death for example if you don't understand what you are you will not fear death but they yeah, want well, you there to isn't. that's a that's a modern concept death is it's always been the afterlife and they're trying to 
eliminate that. They're trying to get everybody so afraid. I'm trying to, to MD, I'm trying to stay neutral. I'm saying yeah, yeah. that's what it is. They want to damn you to hell. Okay. Yeah. If that's a possibility, it's a possibility. All I know is I'm here right now. I'm not in well, hell for eternity. Now, eternity is a big word. Yeah. If you well, say eternity, yeah, eternity, nothing forever. is if one thing we know is nothing is forever. I mean, how's it gonna be forever? You got something that's gonna come after and after and after. And like Alan Watts said, if you look at the uh I think it's Van Eyck's painting uh of, of heaven and hell right he said if you look at it the top part everybody's in heaven sitting in rows like the cat that ate the canary right and in the bottom in hell there's like snakes and lit naked women and sex and all of this shit he goes when you look at the two he goes any person is going to say, well, shit, I'd rather go to the bottom part because at least they're having sex. And it, at least it's something that's interesting instead of staying there looking like somebody that did something wrong, but they're trying to act like they're good. Like um, Al Pacino, I think he might have made a, a, a quote saying when he was a kid, he wanted a bike. So instead of praying to God for the bike, he said no. He goes, he stole the bike and he prayed for forgiveness because that's how God works. <laughs> you know, and, and when you think about it, that's what we see a lot of religion do. Oh, I mean, yeah. And I'm not saying this for all religion, but look oh. at the way it works. I mean, that somebody will do something wrong, especially in New York City uh, churches and synagogues I've seen. People will commit the crime and ask for forgiveness instead of just praying for it. You see, uh, prayer. Exactly. It's like, it's like uh, Godfather 3 where Pacino, you know, already went through a lifetime of murdering people. And all of a sudden, oh, now he's going to confess and whatever. And he starts crying, yeah. whatever. So somehow that three minute little thing yeah, is going to. Five Hail Marys. It's going to make Hail Marys. For, yeah, it's going to make it for a lifetime of crime. And, and that's the problem yeah. that has to be addressed within it. it that that of, of all religion. I mean, it, nobody is exempt from this. This is funny right. because I was watching a movie, the part of the movie last night, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And I don't know if you guys, I'm sure everybody has seen that movie where the one, one of the guys with, with uh, George Clooney goes down and he's baptized and he's like, I'm forgiven now. Do you guys remember that part? So all his sins are yeah. forgiven. Yeah. So he's good to go. <laughs> Yeah, that's what leave it leave it to Hollywood to make a mockery of what is right though. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and oh, the Catholic oh, Church. Well, I do believe I mean, this, the Catholic, this whole the, the, the whole the Catholic Church. This is whole, thing, this whole thing. This whole thing is based off what you call placebos. They give you a placebo. Say here, here's a drug that should cure your whatever, and you believe that, and you will live your life that way. There's been so many medical experiments where they gave people placebos on cancer, or whatever it is. And somehow yeah. the mind was able to overcome the, the illness because they literally believed it. They manifested that somehow. That's what. So there, so there is some truth to that. That's what the guy A.W. <laughs> yeah. Pink talked about uh, in one of his writings. It reminded me of what Tony said. He said there's going to be a lot of people that wake up in hell. But the, the point is, like when Tony says about the, the virgins, there's going to be a lot of disapp <laughs> disappointed people. <laughs> it's like, hold men. up. How, how do you call it? virgin men will be waiting. Like, I've always asked. They, they say most go to hell, few go to heaven. How do you qualify me to go to hell? Was it because of past life or this life in particular? Well, Did I do something in particular to, to piss this guy off? I mean, yeah, what, what, right. what defines that? There is no definition. There is no hand, but well, it's okay. If you do these things, you will go to hell. There is no specific definition. If, if you look at it like that, then no, there's not. But a lot of things, a lot of another problem with Christianity is that the doctrine or the gospel is taught in the avoidance of hell. You know, it's taught like, oh, you need to do this or receive salvation. This to, is this to is avoid hell. Epitome. It's the dangling cookie. But thing, exactly, you know? problem man. This is like the epitome <clears throat> of the lowest of the low trying to get you to, con to control your mind and say, no, if you don't do these things, you're going to damnation and hell. It's like the guy in uh, with Rolo and all these guys when they brought the uh, handicapped kid saying that he's got three-girl rotation, but he's paralyzed from the neck down, but yet he's got three-girl rotation, and they're using him as a uh, success story. You know, this is another example of what? Again, deception. We ourselves do it to ourselves. Why do even... Why yeah. relate that to the devil itself? We ourselves are doing it. We are sort yeah. of doing it. We are the definition of what we call heaven and hell and everything else happening right now in front of mm -hmm. our faces. 
This is not some well, separate thing, you know, happening. What's happening here right now? You're well, thinking, right? You're speaking right now. You ain't speaking in, in, the, in the present or, or future tense when you're in heaven. You're speaking right now. I see you right now on the camera. You're a real flesh and blood man. So all I'm saying is use our senses we got here and now. Whatever they say happens later, let them say whatever, whatever it is. But I'm going to worry about what happens here and now. I don't give a fuck about anything else. That's I, all, I, that's I, has anybody ever been at a funeral where where people are saying, you know, they're going to say, well, you know, you always say he's, you know, we're going to see him again in heaven. Have you ever heard anybody say, well, he's in hell for sure? <laughs> Never. <laughs> ever. Oh, no, 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 no. Ever. <laughs> Like, it, yeah, no, he's in hell. He's not in heaven, you know. I mean, that's I mean, the reality. I mean, I mean everybody, Tony, if, 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 everybody's if, if, going to heaven. Well, Tony, <laughs> here's the thing. If he, if you knew he's in hell, man, you say that, you know, you'd be quickly to join him. You know, certain people you don't talk ill of. You. I mean, <laughs> Tony, if you, if you speak about it, let's say scientifically, to say you're going to live this lifetime, which you're going to, you know, you only have about 80 to 100 years if you're lucky. In comparison to an eternal hell, that is quantifiably, scientifically, mathematically ridiculous on those two scales. To so say you're going to live this life and, and based on this particular lifetime, you can go to hell because of whatever you did. Okay, I agree. Rapist, pedophile. Okay, even in that instance, those people have a mental illness where. In some world, they can be cured of that, you know, that which is evil. So it's it's like you're trying to beat a retarded kid who's got a disability. I don't think everyone's inherently evil. Those separate that separate thing, you know, is created through a social construct through the race and the countries and the corporations. And I, don't, I mean, you said earlier the U.S. We are the U.S. is a corporation, just like the IRS, just like the you know what I just what, what if what if going to hell is coming back here? So that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, their definition like, is yeah. this because you can live both heaven and hell at the same time. Well, no, no. If I'm you go to heaven, you yeah. might not be going to you know. I mean, heaven right. to me, like when I hear the 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 propaganda of it, of the pearly gates, I'm like, so it's a gated community, right? Um, if what if it may be just a better place, right? But it's not going to be a place that you're going to But then you ask, right? you ask yourself, why is it we have so many new souls and also the population is blowing up, even though we have to insult them and all that, the population is blown up. Why is it? it? Does it make more sense that these reincarnations are coming in for a reason or it's just by chance, you know, are people evolving, well, you know? Well, well, think, well, his, his, oh, go on, Bruno. I think Monday Night Man Hour has to be, I think the topic for Monday Night Man Hour, Primal Man, has to be heaven or hell. I think because that is a, that is a, that is a great rabbit hole to go down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could talk about, you know, like I said, have, do you know anybody you've ever been to a funeral where they're like, well, we know he's going to hell. Let's just go ahead and bury him. No. I mean, that's I don't think anyone knows what hell is. Well, well, well have, see, you, ever, have but, you ever heard well, anybody say I'm going to visit my father in hell when I die? No. no. But but Tony, uh, does 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 what? Hold on, give me one second. Tony, what he did does that justify an eternity in hell? Does it? For this for this short lifespan that we see right now that we can measure, is it justifiable to see that man in hell for eternity? We're talking about obviously, eternity. Not obviously not in, in, hum, in humane senses, but based yeah. off of what? Based off of our right. humane determinations? That, that means that God made a mistake in creating this soul, and he's got to somehow recycle it or whatever. That doesn't make sense. I mean, the, the thing of creation of God, God doesn't make anything that's not useful. It doesn't create garbage. It only creates things that can grow and multiply and prosper. It does not create anything that's excess. We are the ones... That manipulate that to create the excess and the garbage and the pollution. Yeah. So that you know, we need to know that much that that whatever is created is not there for no reason. It's there for a reason. Water. You cannot create water. You cannot scientifically produce water. It is just here. You cannot scientifically produce the air you breathe. So when these motions are in place, these variables are in place no matter what. You have to respect those things. But these people have figured out how to use that as a commodity to sell you the same water that should be free 
to sell you eventually the same air you should be able to breathe now because of this if this pandemic thing gets worse it's like you'd be buying bottled air just to breathe you know like like uh what's that movie with schwarzenegger uh <laughs> That's it. Uh, shit, he's on Mars or whatever. For the name of it. Total Recall. Total Recall, yeah. Like that. Mm. You'd be buying air, you're buying water, just regular stuff that should be free. Somehow they've made it into a market. Now you're just in a smaller bubble mm. of reality. Mm. You know, that's really what they're aiming for. That's literally what they're Look what's happening right now. You can't even leave your house. I mean, it's, you can't can't go anywhere without the, vet, you know, the, 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 the jab thing. It's like this has gotten so real, you know. Unless you're in Florida. <laughs> Let's see for but that's subject to change in the next well, week or so, as you know. So you're right. Well, 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 well. Here's the thing, man. I, I was talking to somebody about the God thing. Is here's the problem. If you know, and, and to go back to what Tony said, man. Tony said, and he he said, I'm I'm not afraid to say I don't know. How you can know they're scamming you is how can someone who's a human being who's who's limited, who has limited vision, limited lifespan, how can you describe what a God can determine to be where, where you'll end up? And the other thing is, and, and, and I was talking to somebody, religious and an atheist, you're telling me God knows all. This is where I point out a lot of religious people tend to be hypocritical. It's about you're not part of our, our group. So they add in that aspect to God. So how would God not know, for example, let's say God doesn't know that MD is, let's say MD is an atheist. How would God who knows all not know that when until MD dies and sees said God, MD wouldn't believe. So th this is where I say people have weaponized religion. We weaponize it as a group to attack other people than saying, yo, God knows all. So why would God judge this person for being atheist and agnostic? God would know eventually you're going to arrive to see me one way or another. So well, well, there it are don't matter. I want, I want to tell the truth real quick. That God is what God equals that entity's experience. It cannot create anything beyond that. It can only create what it's experienced, the knowledge of its current state. So whatever, if you create a car, if you create the next exotic airplane, whatever it is, it, it can only go by your experience, what you've learned so far. You cannot go beyond that. So we need to put God in that same limitation. If this God that created us, he hasn't learned fully what love is. Or or, or it's what man wrote about. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so it, it could be the adulterated verge. Like if you look at Genesis, right? And God comes in saying, okay, hey, Adam and Eve, after they eat the fruit of knowledge, right? They're hiding because they know they're naked, right? So he's saying, hey, wh where are you guys? Why did they say, hey, what the fuck you mean, where are we? Ain't you supposed to know everything? It's like, who the fuck are you asking, where are we, when you're supposed to know everything that's fucking going on? You see, so just a little common sense in there to say, oh, so you're telling me you didn't know we ate the fruit of knowledge? What? You see what I'm saying? So you start to quite, add. Quite possibly, was he was he mocking them? Well, it could it could be it definitely could be, or it could be a little change in this in the verses. You see, it could be that somebody said, "Hey, you know what?" Uh, because you know what they they rarely mention. I don't know which uh, which version it would be in. Is that Eve? Some of them try to say she made union with the serpent, not the snake the serpent. So this is a serpent with legs and arms, right? There's Egyptian depictions of what appear to be a walking amphibian as well, right? Carrying two potions. I have like the pictures and stuff. I'll show them on the, on the new channel. You start to look at this and you say, okay, so Eve basically fucked the serpent, right? Then, um, you got, uh, you got Adam and, you know, she's, you know, now she's going to eat this fruit of knowledge. I mean, there's just so much shit that doesn't add up when you just think about it. You start to say, damn, what the... But that's why I'm saying the syncretism thing. You look at all of it and see how it compares, and you'll see a common denominator. Mm -hmm. But I know Tony wanted to end the stream. I don't know if yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's I, know. I, I want to uh, I want to throw up this comment here because I think this was a great comment. So fear is addressed with knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah. They well, say... That what better way to address? Wow, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. They say uh, um, replace your fear of the unknown with curiosity, mm -hmm. and that curiosity is seeking knowledge. Yeah, that's seeking. a great comment. 
Yep. That's all we can do is seek. That's it. Yeah. And what do they say? Seek and you shall find. Seek and you shall find. Then we go back to the scripture, and the scripture said it itself. Okay. No, that's, that's where it, I'm yeah. at. That's, I'm just seeking, but, and, and what I seek, and I, I find, it's like it's almost as if I'm being led. I'm just walking through the doors that open. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a scholar by any means, or a but, scientist for that matter. But unfortunately, problem man, you gotta get bit by that rattlesnake to endure some level of uh, fear and death to reach those heights that you're looking for. Unfortunately, yeah, you, gotta, you have to fail certain not to learn that knowledge that no one else will learn because you put yourself in that position. Therefore, you only one that knows that you cannot be taught. It can only be just like, just like Morpheus said, the matrix cannot be explain it can only be shown or yeah. you have to live it you have to experience it that's how you learn it no one can teach it so that's, that's right. why you, you put in that position that's right that's why i'm here now because i've done experience some of that i'm sure i'll experience more but hey it's, it's my cross to carry uh primal man any last words tell everybody how they can find you and tell us about monday night i mean we we four hours and 15 minutes in the stream and i had nothing but fun um, and yeah. learn some things too. Heck yeah. Uh, you can find me on the Primal Man channel, like it says on my name up here. You, your YouTube Primal Man, you'll find me there. And uh, we have a show every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central Time on Primal Man called Monday Night Man Hour. And um, we do it lately, we've been doing a lot of bio, scripture breakdown, scripture reading. And I have Gonzo on there, and we talk about a lot of issues and we even answer questions. It's not very scientific, um, but uh, we might we we may go there sometimes. But I uh, hope you enjoy that. Come check us out. Yeah, for sure. Scribe. Yeah, Thanks for coming mm -hmm. on. I guess uh, the way they can find you is on MD Stream, correct? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a few more streams and switch over to a new one. So, yeah, I appreciate you having me on, and yeah, you always have great streams. And yeah, this is awesome. And, this has yeah. been great. Really has. I, I I do like that saying. Fear is addressed with knowledge. Yeah, that was that was good. That's a great comment to finish that up. Is, yeah, that's, we got that's, seven that's, dislikes on the video. Someone's got to coin that. You might you might want to coin that, Tony. You might want to write that. <laughs> yeah. MD, any hey. last words? Oh, hey, thank you for having me, man. We'll definitely talk again soon, bro. I really yeah. appreciate it. All awesome. Time. And anybody, I do have uh, the stream or the uh, link to uh, MGTOW Dictionary and his books in the description of the video so um so check it out same thing with primal man you can find them there but uh i appreciate everybody man this was this has been this has been great man i just you know you, you still you, it doesn't matter what age you are you can still learn you know you can still learn. thank you man thank you but for I, that. I, I got I, your channel feature too on the recommended list thank oh, i appreciate you for that me. appreciate that a lot man i do channel's growing it's growing you know i'm getting 60, 70 subs a month, which is pretty good for a small channel. That's good, man. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Man. I just want to say time. one last thing. As long as we can keep the fire within us, it's like, you know how they say, oh, you're going to retire. Well, retire from what? Right. You know, I'm, I'm going to do what I love no matter what and burn out when I need to burn out, but I'm never yeah. going to stop. That's the yeah. fire within. You got to keep that fire. If not, you retire and you what? Retire until nothingness. That's it. <laughs> That's what I say. Retire from what? <laughs> Right, awesome stream brothers yeah thank you guys i appreciate you appreciate all of you for coming on tonight it's been great thank you man thank, thank you, you brother thank Talk you, you see all you right, fellas man. take care